how to learn almost anything in 48 hours, the skills you need to work smarter, study faster, and remember more. Book by Tansal Ali Below is a 7-step guide to learning almost anything in 48 hours. Applied with the techniques and tips from this book, it will create a structured process for you to follow and make sure you are on track to achieving learning success. 1. Gather materials and resources to learn, up to 3 hours. You've made the choice to learn something. The first step then is to gather all the resources and materials you need to get started. If you were to learn a language, for example, the list of resources might include books, audio, websites and apps. It might also be helpful to find a native speaker with whom you can practice speaking the language. 2. Develop memorization strategy up to 2 hours. Once you have gathered all you need, Make a decision on the memory techniques you plan to use from this book. For example, if you are wanting to memorize a lengthy list, such as past presidents of the United States of America, you would look at using the method of loci. If you are wanting to acquire knowledge fast, you would look at developing a mind map of the content and using visualization methods such as SMASHIN scope to create engaging associations in your mind with the knowledge. Reading this book will help with identifying the most relevant strategy. The more practice you get at identifying which memory techniques to use, the better you become at developing a memorization strategy. 3. Organize prioritize materials up to 1 hour. With your strategy developed, the next step is to organize the materials and resources you have to fit inside your strategy. If your strategy was to memorize all 1500 French phrases, then you will need to make sure you have your 1500 French phrases set out in a way that will make it easy for you to go through them one by one. One method of doing that is to enter or copy and paste each phrase into a spreadsheet so that it becomes easy to access. 4. Create accountability up to one hour. It is important to share your learning task with the family. Member, friend, or anyone else that will hold you accountable. Accountability to others creates motivation to get you going so that you don't let others down. We do tend to slack off if we are accountable to only ourselves. 5. Memorize up to 30 hours. Once you have all of your materials and have developed your process for learning, it is time for action. It is best to start with short periods of memorization rather than long. The reason for this is that it is less strain on the brain, you will complete a set memorization period quickly, and as you get better you will increase your time. If you start with longer memorization periods then it will overwhelm you very quickly. Keep it short and simple. 6. Review spaced repetition up to 1 hour. Once you have memorized you will need to go back and review your work. This helps to store your memorization in long term memory. Depending on what you are learning, of course, the rule for spaced repetition is to review an hour later, then a day later, then a week later, a month later, three months later, six months later and finally a year later. 7. Practice and apply up to 10 hours. Once you have memorized and used techniques to achieve what you want, you will need to practice to give yourself feedback on your memorization. This is the test of how much you have learned. If you have indeed memorized 1500 French phrases, go into an environment where French is spoken and have conversations. Are you able to speak it? What works? What doesn't? Note all these down and figure out why these were the case. Learn from them and then go back and re-memorize. Having the chance to practice what you have memorized is crucial to the learning process. Memorization only helps you to store the information whereas learning helps you understand. Practice is the intersection where these two meet. So try to practice as much as you can and, before you know, you will learn anything you want to learn in record time. Chapter 1. Introduction. Nothing is impossible, the word itself says. I'm possible, Audrey Hepburn. Time is perhaps the most precious thing we possess. We only have it once. It's not renewable and we could all use it better.
we can be so entrenched in our daily lives that, in spite of our desires, we can't seem to find the time to better ourselves, pursue our hobbies and participate in activities we love. I frequently hear people say they wish they could learn a language, play a musical instrument or even hang out with their family more if only they had the time. But then time passes, and nothing changes. We need to remind ourselves, as many philosophies and religions espouse, that all we have is now. How to learn almost anything in 48 hours gives you new skills to learn things that you never thought possible, and to make sure your time is used effectively. Today at the touch of a few buttons we have access to far more information than we could ever need. We are not just bombarded with information from online but from schools, universities, short courses, seminars, workshops and conferences. Unfortunately, our brains are often unable to cope with the relentless volume of data from multiple sources day after day. Information overload is a real problem and can cause anxiety and stress. The knock-on effects of stress may mean increased forgetfulness and reduced confidence, self-esteem and productivity. Learning should be exciting and fun and never frightening. With that in mind, this book is a deliberate, conscious disruption to traditional learning methods, especially that of rote learning. Studying memory has made me appreciate that the brain is far more amazing than most of us realize. The idea for how to learn almost anything in 48 hours came about after I memorized two yellow pages phone books in only 24 days. I reasoned that the techniques and strategies that helped me do that could be used by everyone to learn faster and better, and the memory techniques explained here apply to all forms of information-based learning. No matter what your school grades, class culture or environment indicate, I believe you can learn anything you want to. Nothing is too difficult. People who have learned these memory techniques have gone on to learn languages in record time. Memorize books, shine as elite athletes, dazzle as public speakers, and become outstanding leaders and people of influence such as inventor and entrepreneur Elon Musk and basketball star LeBron James. You do not require a degree or need to have blitzed special exams to have this knowledge. You just need your imagination and the will to try. Make the most of now. Don't delay starting something. There is only now. Think about your personal goals and how you would like to lead your life. Your mind is amazing, therefore you have the ability to be amazing. Do not be afraid to fail. I'm writing this book because I've failed countless times. Don't give up. Muhammad Ali was once asked how many sit-ups he could do. He replied that he only started counting once he started to hurt. Pushing through that difficult part will lead to success. How it works. The secret of getting ahead is getting stated. Mark Twain. Did you know? New brain connections are created every time you form a memory. Chapter 2. Memory Principles. In recent years there has been an explosion of interest in all matters to do with the brain, as seen in the popularity of brain apps, books and games, and topics such as plasticity and general brain health gaining greater currency. This book helps you adopt newer, faster, more effective forms of learning, which also means training your brain to think and act in new ways. Imagination is the key. For generations rote learning has been our principal way of remembering things, with repetition the sole focus of our memorization. A more effective way of remembering, though, is to use our imagination. Rather than repeat information over and over again we can create highly imaginative visual stories to connect with what is to be remembered. Aside from being fun, remembering made-up stories engages our brain in many more ways than traditional memorization. Words are processed on one side of the brain, images on the other. Repeating words is ineffective, but creating images from those words is incredibly strong. Consider how often people go back to reread sentences in books because they felt they missed something or could have understood something better. It happens a lot. Contrast that with people watching a movie and how many would rewind every few minutes to make sure they don't miss anything. I'm guessing there would be none. This is because the movie visually engages us.
we see body language, environments, we feel emotion, we experience being in the moment, we are one with the movie. Reading text is different. There needs to be an encoding process that transforms the text into images for us to truly understand we need to create the experience. This doesn't mean that watching something is better than reading. It just means that using visual processes to trigger your imagination helps us remember better. Reading text can also trigger the imagination far beyond what we see on a movie screen. It is the use of imagination that will give you a better mind and memory to learn faster and better. Memory Foundation The Building Blocks to a Better Memory Before learning memory techniques, it is essential to build a foundation for your memory. Having a foundation gives you the basics to remember and learn anything. Without it you will not learn as effectively and will need to keep going back to review your work. Interestingly, the two major principles discussed in this chapter build both memory foundation skills and creativity. They work hand in hand, complementing each other in the memory process. Smash and Scope One of the greatest learning methods I've come across in my many years as a memory trainer is called SMASHIN Scope. It was devised by British learning entrepreneur Tony Buzan, who also created mind mapping, more of that later, and his colleague Wander North. It's an acronym that details how we can use our brain to greatly enhance our visual perception. These 12 principles not only help us remember better, they help us become a more creative and lateral thinker. Synesthesia senses. This interesting word refers to our senses and sensations. Generally when we picture something it is a static image. If I said, whiteboard, most people will see in their mind's eye a whiteboard either mounted on a wall or on casters. Rather than just seeing the image, if we use our other senses we can become further engaged and involved with our subject, think of smell, touch, taste and sound. If you went up to the whiteboard and licked it, what would it taste like? Next time you see static images, Use your senses to exercise your mind. Movement Movement makes a static image dynamic. Using the whiteboard example, we can now visualize it spinning around, moving from side to side, or even growing legs and walking out of the room. The subject could even be you moving around the object, maybe you are flying around it or vice versa. Movement creates traction in the brain that connects its subject, making it more memorable. Association. Without association there is no connection. If there is no connection then there is no memory. Visualize a pen next to paper. This is a weak association because there is no physical connection. But if the pen writes on the paper there is a connection. But to make this more exciting and memorable, what if the pen scribbles on the paper, ripping it to shreds? Writing on paper is a very logical and common thing. The shredding story doesn't occur every day so it's more memorable, with the brain saying, wow, what just happened? Sexuality itself. Tony Buzan says we all have a good memory around this topic so let's use it. Maybe what you are trying to remember or visualize resembles a certain body part. There are many ways to use this type of imagery for people so inclined. When I'm working with kids, though, I tell them to visualize themselves as the subject. Imagine being the actual whiteboard. How does it feel to have people write on your face all day? Do you get a kick out of it or are you stuck in wishing to be free? Humor. Something funny can be a huge help with your visualizing. This doesn't mean you have to be the funniest person in the room, it means use what's funny to you. When I meet someone called John, for example, I immediately picture him sitting on a toilet. For me that's funny, for others it may not be, but it is memorable. I believe comedians are often super creative super creative beings because they find ways to communicate a point and to make it entertaining and unique. If you want to exercise your creativity, why not learn more about comedy? Imagination when we visualize we usually think of real things in our world. We try and make logical associations with what we are trying to remember. I sat down on the chair. 
I stopped at the red light. I typed on my laptop. These examples are perfectly normal, but they are not memorable. If we want to have a great memory and become more creative, we need to step outside this logical realm. Instead of just imagining sitting on a chair, how about the chair turning around, jumping and then sitting on you? Your brain sees this image with stunning clarity precisely because it isn't a normal occurrence, and so a stronger mental image is created. Imagination is your friend that can take you to places and help you see things you have never seen or experienced before. As Victor Hugo so vividly put it, Imagination is intelligence with an erection. Numbers. Sometimes we need a bit of order in our visualizations. Numbers create that order and provide some much needed relief for the logical thinkers among us. Applying numbers that mean something to you to an image can create a much stronger emotional connection to that image. The number 23, for example, reminds me of the great sporting hero Michael Jordan. If I see the number 23 anywhere it reminds me of him in the day my Jordan 5 shoes were stolen while playing into shoe football. Symbolism As we've heard, a picture is worth a thousand. Words Symbols often carry a great deal of information at just a glance. They also help communicate a specific message. What would happen, say, if street signs were written in sentences? You wouldn't have time to read them before another sign appeared, and then another, then bang. You've crashed. Your brain processes images much faster than words, which is exactly how speed reading works. Color Creativity loves color. Used well, colors can help you think and remember very quickly. Instead of visualizing a bright red tomato, perhaps see it as a bright blue tomato. That whiteboard might actually be black and blue, not white and silver. All you need to do is visualize the difference, and that will be enough to make it memorable. But you don't always have to choose a different color to visualize the item. Imagine Uluru in all its beauty against the setting sun, the amazing red rock glowing as you move closer to it. It is mesmerizing. If you use the same color as the thing you're visualizing, then accentuate it and bring out that experience in your mind. Try and feel the color if you can. Order. Creating a sequence of events or stories allows our brain to follow a visual pattern that helps us to remember. Creating these patterns and sequences not only builds creativity, it also assists us in grouping things and storing them safely in our brain. This is where techniques such as the method of loci help us connect random objects together. Chapter 3 Positive Images Happy, positive images make you feel all cozy inside and they do help you remember. Negative images are often as memorable or even more so. When visualizing, you can use either. The bright red tomato looked so tasty I ate it. The tomato was rotten, but I still ate it, and then I vomited. The brain loves drama and gets attached to it. Exaggeration Make things much larger than they are in real life so your mind creates an extraordinary image to remember. Visualize a kebab six meters tall waddling down the road with garlic sauce dripping down its sides and crowds of screaming, hungry people running up to it, tripping over themselves from all directions with absolute joy. Unforgettable. How it works. Think of a subject and then apply SMESHIN scope to make it more memorable. A cat. In milliseconds you just visualized a cat. To make the cat more memorable we could color the cat red color, make it smell like it had farted senses, have it jump up on top of you, movement to rub that smell on you, senses. This hopefully is not a real life scenario so in its creation we used imagination, association with the cat and yourself, as well as exaggeration of the narrative. Try not to use your everyday logic when creating stories. Use your imagination to make silly creative stories that will stick in your mind. After all, you are trying to make it memorable. Make memorable stories from the following pairs of words using SMESHIN scope. Each pair has been divided into examples of concrete nouns, concrete plus abstract nouns, and finally both abstract nouns. 
Concrete nouns already give us a visual of the word, but abstract nouns don't. You need to create an image for the abstract noun and connect it back to the other word. Cow plus strike. Toothpaste plus hibernation. Experience plus mediation. Smash and scope helps integrate the logical part of your brain with the creative to enhance your mental capabilities. It may seem ridiculous to make things humorous or to use different colors, but you're still learning. The more you do these sorts of exercises in your head, the more you'll discover what a practical difference they make in the real world. In meetings where you need to solve problems quickly, instead of having one or two ideas, you might now come up with five. Even in sport, instead of having three options to choose from, your mind can now think laterally and consider other scenarios. Often the best people in sport and business are creative and are making the best decisions. This does not have to be an innate thing. It can be learned by using simple tools such as SMASHIN scope. How long? Once you've done some practicing it should take around 30 seconds to create a story using SMASHIN scope. For difficult, non-concrete words, it may take up to 1 minute. The Yellow Elephant Memory Model my first book was called The Yellow Elephant, which also happens to be the name of a memory model I developed. It helps us to solve memory-related problems by following a four-step-four-step -step guide to make something memorable. 1. Abstract Information, ideas or concepts without physical form, or things that do not make sense to us are likely to be abstract. This includes languages that we are unfamiliar with and highly specialized forms of learning such as quantum physics. Strings of numbers, words, and even people's names can be abstract. Abstract things are slippery to understand and don't mean anything to us unless an image is created inside our brain. 2. Image To make things more memorable we need to convert the abstract into an image. We may or may not be able to understand what this abstract thing means, but by making it an image we prepare our mind to understand how to use it at step 3. The word creativity, for example, is abstract as it does not conjure up a specific image in our mind. If, however, we use the image of a light bulb or even that of Albert Einstein then we have converted the abstract nature of the word to an image we both recognize and understand. 3. Association to complete the memorization process, we need a story connecting the elements through association. A strong association is made when what you're memorizing is physically connected. Earlier I used the example of pen and paper and how when the pen writes on paper, or better yet shreds the paper by pressing too firmly on it, a stronger association is made. The stronger the association, the more memorable it is. 4. Communication how do you then make this memorable for others? Steps 1 to 3 occur in our own heads but communicating this to others may require some adapting and adjusting. What we create for ourselves may not suit or be appropriate for our audience so we need to consider new ways to craft information that others can understand, whether it's study notes from class or grand public presentations. How it works? Remembering names. Names are forgotten because they are abstract in nature. There is no image for our brains to connect and store. So the trick to remembering names is to create the image and make an association. If you are trying to remember the name Claire, for example, you could picture Claire being eaten by a bear. Bear will trigger the name Claire because of their shared rhyming properties. You may also picture Claire looking like a bear. Or perhaps Claire has lots of hair sprouting from her nose or claw-like hands. Make this image as graphic as you can. You may even imagine Claire being chased by a bear, but because there is no physical connection or contact between Claire and the bear it weakens the memorization. So even though there may be an emotional connection to the image, such as Claire's fear of the bear, a physical connection with your images will help you remember better. When listening Words are extremely powerful and can have deep emotional connections, but only if they're visualized. 
you can listen to instructions, presentations, or even a friend chatting to you, but if you don't convert what they are saying into images, you may miss the importance of the message and increase your likelihood of forgetting. When listening to anything, visualize the images using SMASHIN scope principles to make better stories and you'll remember much more than before. When trying to learn anything new, when you first come across information it needs to be organized and arranged in a way for your brain to make sense of it and create images. Techniques such as mind maps, chapter 3, and drawings help you visualize and order information. Once you have visual order, you can make connecting stories. Imagination is the key to making anything more memorable. Build on foundation memory principles with SMASHIN scope and bring your story to life. You can practice on anything you can visualize. The yellow elephant memory model will help you when you are not sure how to remember something. Break it down by looking at how you can create memorable mental images and link the story. Chapter 3. Memory Techniques Many people believe having a great memory is a gift. When I was 19, I actually believed I had a shocking memory. I would forget names, directions, what I had just read, and even what people had said to me a minute ago. It was embarrassing. However, I accepted that I had not been born with a great memory, that is, until I stumbled upon memory techniques. These mental activities made me use my imagination and little did I know how easy it was to improve my memory. Not only that, but I would go on to learn much faster, achieve more, and gain significant confidence in myself to do anything as I got older. Now it is your turn to experience the power of memory techniques. Linking and Association Linking and Association is a technique that helps us remember effectively by creating stories using the items we want to remember in a sequential order. It's possible to link and associate any piece of information with another. Many people are unsuccessful in their early attempts to do this, though, because their links and connections are broken along the way to memorization. How it works? Let's say we had five items to remember. The linking process would look like this. The first item is connected to the initial subject, and to the second item. Each subsequent item is connected to the one following it in a sequence. How to use? Remembering a list of words. 1. Shoes. 2. Milk. 3. Postman. 4. Donkey. 5. Blue. Imagine your shoes smelling profusely. You decide to take them off, and as you do milk starts to pour out. The milk splatters everywhere and somehow splashes into the eye of the postman. The postman is angry jumps on his donkey and starts to chase you. You run for your life and feel yourself getting sick and suddenly you turn blue. To-do list 1. Take the rubbish bin out. 2. Buy the newspaper. 3. Pick up dry cleaning. 4. Work out at the gym. 5. Water the plants. You head out of the house and suddenly the rubbish bin flips over and tips itself on top of you. The rubbish is full of newspapers that stink like something has died in them. Before you reach you head over to the dry cleaners to change into clean clothes. You feel refreshed and pumped, so much so that you are inspired to work out at the gym. You drink too much water during your workout and the toilets are out of order so you end up watering the plants. With linking and association the word you are memorizing does not have to be exactly the same as how you memorize it. So if I try to remember the word, kaleidoscope, I might visualize and come up with something that sounds like the first part of the word, such as calendar, where cal acts as a trigger to kaleidoscope. My associative story could then be that I looked at my calendar and it was spiraling visually like broken mirrors. How long? As long as it takes to read the paragraph and connect with the listed words, around one minute. This book uses many triggers to form associations with words. Since we are using our own imagination everyone's stories and triggers will be different, so feel free to create your own triggers to the exercises in this book. Number Rhyme 
This is where the numbers rhyme with the words. How it works. 1 equals gun. 2 equals shoe. 3 equals tree. 4 equals door. 5 equals hive. 6 equals sticks. 7 equals heaven. 8 equals gate. 9 equals wine. 10 equals pen. How to use? Let's say we want to remember the words on the right of the rhyming words. We link the rhyming list with the words to be remembered list. 1. Gun. Elephant. 2. Chew. Breakfast. 3. Tree. CD. 4. Door. Computer. 5. Hive. TV remote. 6. Sticks. Water. 7. Heaven. Towel. 8. Gate. Chocolate. 9. Wine. Tomato. 10. Pen. Phone. The elephant is shot with a gun. Luckily it does not die. You eat breakfast with your shoe as a spoon. The tree outside is growing CDs. The door opens onto a supercomputer. There is a beehive inside the TV remote. You throw sticks into the water because you are bored. As soon as you enter heaven you are given a refresher towel. The gate is made out of chocolate and you have to bite your way through to enter. You shove a whole tomato inside a wine bottle. You draw smiley faces with your colored pen on a stranger's mobile phone. Recall. All that's left now is to remember what happened with each of the rhyming numbers to give you the item you had memorized. 1. Gun. 2. Chew. 3. Tree. 4. Door. 5. Hive. 6. Sticks. 7. Heaven. 8. Gate. 9. Wine. 10. Pen. How long? Around 10 seconds for each story from the above examples, so a little under 2 minutes. Number shape. This is just like the number rhyme system but it uses images that look like the number instead of rhyming with it. How it works. How to use. Let's say we want to remember the words on the right of the number shape words. We link both the shape list with the words to be remembered list. 1. Candlestick. Elephant. 2. Swan. Breakfast. 3. Trident. CD. 4. Boat. Computer. 5. Hook. TV remote. 6. Elephant's trunk. Water. 7. Feathers. Towel. 8. Glasses. Chocolate. 9. Snake. Tomato. 10. Bat and ball. Phone. The candlestick burns the butt of the elephant. The swan eats poached eggs for breakfast. At Trident Motors they are giving away free One Direction CDs. Your boat has a computer attached to the end of it for GPS navigation. You grab your TV remote with a hook because you just can't be bothered getting up. The elephant's trunk sprays water all over you at the zoo. As the leaves come down you suddenly notice you are only wearing a towel. Your glasses are drenched in chocolate. Um, chocolate. You feed your pet snake a juicy red tomato. You hit the ball with the bat so hard that it breaks your neighbor's mobile phone as they are using it. Recall. All that's left now is to remember what happened with each of the number shape words to give you the item you had memorized. Thought. How long? Around 10 seconds for each story from the above examples, so a little under 2 minutes. Method of loci. This memory technique creates locations and or objects in a sequential order to store information. The storage is done through linking an association of the location and item to be memorized. The most important feature of this method is to remember information in sequence order. The number of locations is almost limitless and I have over 300 sequential locations just while walking down the street. How it works? Here is a set of locations that might be in sequential order. 1. Front door. 2. Bed. 3. Shower. 
4. Sink. 5. Cupboard. How to use. Location. Item to be memorized. 1. Front door. Mobile phone. 2. Bed. Yogurt. 3. Shower. Cucumber. 4. Sink. Chainsaw. 5. Cupboard. Tiger. You head towards the front door of your house and it turns into a huge mobile phone, which you have to swipe through to get inside. You hop into bed and you feel something sticky. Oh dear, someone has smothered yogurt all over the bed. You jump into the shower and rub cucumber all over your body thinking it is soap. You turn the sink tap on and it makes a buzzing chainsaw noise. You peer deeper into the sink and find a miniature chainsaw inside. You open the cupboard to find a live tiger all squashed inside, ready to jump out and attack. Pre-call. All that's left to do now is to remember what happened in each of the locations to give you the item you had memorized. How long? Around 20 seconds for each story from the above examples, so a little under 2 minutes. Mind mapping. Mind mapping helps you organize information and ideas in a nonlinear manner. Its inventor, Tony Buzan, calls it a thinking tool that reflects externally what goes on inside your head. Often when we're thinking, things are not exactly organized. Thoughts are scattered and we need to gather together snippets of information from many places in our brain to understand something. A mind map allows you to create a complete plan all on one page so you can see direct and tangential links for specific topics. Mind maps can be used to make and take study notes, memorize books and even organize weddings. It is also a powerful technique for improved productivity, as demonstrated by the abundance of apps and software available such as a mind map, XMind, MindNode, MindGenius, NovaMind and Mind Manager. But it's not necessary to buy software as they're easy to draw by hand. How it works? 1. Take the main topic and put it at the center of a page. 2. Create section headings like thick branches starting at 1 o'clock and moving clockwise. 3. Create subheadings from the section headings. 4. Use color and images throughout to engage the brain. Sort analysis. This mind map has subheadings that create an order of information understood at a glance. Speech preparation. This next mind map is a 40-minute presentation I gave on two topics. The perfect job interview and time management. I also added time estimates to help me prepare more accurately. A mind map can be a great help with visual presentations if you are using software programs such as MS PowerPoint or Keynote. Speed reading. Imagine completing your reading in hours instead of weeks. Imagine, too. Managing your social media and all those emails, reports, assignments and documents with time to spare and a greater understanding of their content. Speed reading truly can be life-changing, and for those who are not natural readers, like me, it can be especially rewarding. Bibliophobia is the fear of books and speed reading cures that fear. When we were children we were taught to read word by word. This is fine for learning how to read. But as our brain gets better at comprehending basic text, we should be able to absorb information in larger chunks rather than individual words. Speed reading uses techniques to encode words into images, enabling faster, more effective reading. Our brain has the ability to group together phrases so that we visualize what's happening rather than reading word by word. Speed reading enables you to absorb information in chunks as you read. It creates better comprehension as you visualize groups of words together in context rather than each word. How it works? Using a visual guide. Reading with a finger or some sort of pointing device like a pen along the line helps to reduce the number of times you need to go back to reread. This in turn allows quicker reading. How to use? Run your finger underneath the words as you read as a guide. This tricks your brain into reading more as your eyes will not only follow your guide, but see further along from the guide, forcing you to read faster. The more you practice the less you'll notice your guide because you'll be so involved in the text. The more you are involved, 
the more you will remember. The more you remember, the better you will comprehend what you read. Image flow. Words are grouped into contextual meanings instead of set chunk sizes. This results in a more consistent and visual flow of reading. How it works. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Words are grouped into their meaningful context. This enables the brain to process three phrases rather than reading nine individual words. If one word takes one second to read, then nine words will take nine seconds. But reading three phrases using image flow should take only a second to process each context, which means you will already be reading three times faster. Speed reading exercise. Here is an exercise on how to view images in chunks using image flow. Try visualizing the content in brackets before moving along to the next bracket. 7 Tips to Reduce Stress at Work In 2014, I presented in Iran at the International Conference on Memory and Stress Management. Here are 7 tips on how to reduce stress and become a happier worker. 1. Be aware. Most people are oblivious to the fact that they are stressed. Their breathing changes, heart rate increases, and even their speech is faster than normal. They can sometimes be a nuisance to others without even knowing. Making a conscious effort to take a critical look at yourself and see if your stress can help you enormously. Once you know you're stressed, you are then able to take action to reduce that stress. 2. Take a break. Often when stuck in front of the computer, for hours things can get quite stressful, especially if you are on a deadline. Taking a quick power nap or a brisk 15-minute walk from a stressful situation can alleviate some stress symptoms. 3. Be healthy. If all we are eating is rubbish then we will feel like rubbish. Eating good food, exercising and avoiding drugs all help to reduce stress. One cool trick I've learned from Tony Buzan's book Headstrong is to keep telling yourself that you are in the process of becoming healthy. This engages the brain in the present and helps you to take action. Try it. 4. Have a laugh. A proven stress destroyer, laughter can take your mind off things causing you stressed stressor. Watch some videos, talk to some funny friends, crack some jokes, do whatever it takes to give yourself a positive experience so that you not only reduce stress, you enjoy life. 5. Learn to say no. Here's a big one. A lot of stress spots I've met in office environments have made a habit of saying yes to everything. Stop it, damn it, now. It creates further work, pushes mental and physical boundaries and of course gives you more stress. You will also find that saying no is so liberating. Know when to say no and you will be saving yourself. 6. Socialize. I know, when I was stressed, the last thing I ever wanted to do was meet up with people. But research shows that socializing is a great form of reducing stress. It takes you away from your bubble of life into the lives of others. Suddenly you find yourself enjoying company and talking about things that are exciting and interesting again taking you away from worrying. 7. Get rid of distractions. You wake up and first thing in the morning, you check your emails. You end up regretting it and it affects your mood while you are getting ready, eating breakfast and traveling to work. As soon as you get to work, you switch your computer on and look at more emails. Ah, they keep coming throughout the day and you just keep checking them. What a life! When you check your email, it creates a world in your head full of the content in the email. Some worlds are small, some are massive, some irrelevant. In any case, there are hundreds of worlds out there in your head that you are worrying about. The best plan is to clear your head of these stories by checking your email less often and doing them in batches, as Timothy Ferris explains in his book The 4-Hour Work Week. This will help restore sanity into your life. Practice speed reading with a variety of materials to help you build your visual reading skills. It is not the easiest of memory techniques, but it may prove to be the most rewarding. Make sure your linking and association connections are not overlapping. 
item 1 has no relationship with item 3, and while it may feel natural to assume a connection there, it could make you lose the order of memorization. Visualize your locations and objects in the method of loci as much as you can. Having imaginative and visually clear loci is a huge help with recall and retention in long-term memory. Mind maps order your information visually. When reading, use your finger as a guide by running it under the words. Doing this will not only help you read faster but also improve your comprehension. Chapter 4 Advanced Memory Techniques Remembering numbers can be really tricky unless you use a particular technique. Here are several that are incredibly useful. The major system. This encodes numbers into phonetic sounds based on the letters of the alphabet but not vowels including the letter Y. The following numbers represent the letters next to it. 0 equals S, Z, C, Tsiling. 1 equals T or D. 2 equals N, G, N. 3 equals M. 4 equals R. 5 equals L. 6 equals S, H, J, D, G, H, C, H, Ch, G, George. 7 equals C, K, C, K, C, H, Cot, G, Goat. 8 equals F, V, P, H, G, H. 9 equals P or B. How it works? Take a pair of digits and make a few small words using the above code. The number 32 can be man, for example, 77 cake, 86 fish and 09 soap. How to use? There are many uses for the major system, but it's mostly used for remembering a long series of numbers. NB You do not need to know the major system codes off by heart. Just have them close by for reference. Memorizing numbers. To remember this 20 digit number, we would pair up the numbers and then make a story using linking and association. 92573391144768217282. 92pen plus 57, leg plus 33, mummy plus 91, bat plus 14, dog plus 47, rock plus 68, chef plus 21, neck plus 72, gun plus 82, fan. The pen writes a large squiggle on my leg. When I stand up I see a mummy 3 meters tall holding a bat. I run as fast as I can, open a door and go inside. There he is, the rock holding eggs, about to bake a fairy cake. He is dressed as a chef, wearing a net on his head. Then he swaps his net for a large machine gun, and his fans watching applaud the action hero. How long? Around 2 minutes to remember all the digits after reading the above story. Using method of loci. We can also use the method of loci to store numbers in pairs for each location. All that is left to do is to recall the story from each location, which will in turn give you the word associated with the numbers above. 1. Front. It will take between 10 to 20 seconds to make the story connection with the location and item to be memorized. So for 10 items it's around 3 minutes. Memorizing playing cards. Create an image for each card using the major system or use the references below. Using method of loci. Using the method of loci here's how to memorize 10 random playing cards. Each card is connected to a location for an imaginative story to be made. After you've memorized 10 playing cards, try doubling that effort to 20. Ultimately your goal is to memorize 52 playing cards in 52 locations. How long? It should take around 20 seconds to create a story with the location and card, so for the 10 items it's around 3 minutes. Dominic System Created by Dominic O'Brien, world memory champion for a record 8 times, this technique is similar to the major system and encodes digits into people and actions. The numbers coded are 0 equals O, 1 equals A, 2 equals B, 3 equals C, 4 equals D, 5 equals A, 6 equals S, 7 equals G, 8 equals H, 9 equals N. How it works? Group the digits of numbers to be memorized into pairs. 
The letters of the first pair of digits creates a person using the initials of their first name and surname. The next pair relates to an action or activity of the person. How to use? Let's memorize this number using the Dominic system. 925933015426821782. Using the above table, we see that number 92 makes NB with 9 equals N and B equals 2. From this we can use the initials to create a name. In this case, Napoleon Bonaparte. Since we have a person for the number 92, we can now attribute an action. In this case we have chosen Napoleon Bonaparte fighting in battle. The action element comes in when we are combining numbers together. The first two digits are always a person. The next two digits are always an action. Using the method of loci to help, you can now use the person action action strategy of the Dominic system. You do not need to know the major system codes as you start memorizing, just have them close by as a reference. Before long you'll know them off by heart. When linking numbers make sure you don't mix up the order of the numbers you are trying to remember. If you make an incorrect story you will recall incorrect numbers. When using the method of loci to remember numbers. Always attach the story deeply into the location. Remember, physical connection makes for stronger memorization. The method of loci is the fastest way to memorize playing cards. Create as many loci as you can so you don't get your stories mixed up by repeatedly using the same location. Creating a spreadsheet listing people and their actions is super helpful when using the Dominic system. Impress others with these new skills and spread the love. Chapter 5. Plan, then act. The great aim of education is not knowledge but action, Herbert Spencer. So now you're completely across the principles and techniques of memory training. In the following chapters you'll see how to apply them to many different topics and will soon be able to apply them to any area of learning you want. In my 13 years as a memory trainer I haven't met anyone from the ages of 4 to over 90 who wasn't able to use these strategies. Anyone who has an imagination is able to use memory techniques to enhance their memory. Ah. Uh, I hear you saying, it's not that simple. Sure, it requires commitment, but if you're keen to learn more about the world and the millions of wonderful things in it and out of it then stick with it for a while. Too often we give up on things before we really get started. New Year's resolutions are a perfect example of this. Don't wait till the 1st of January to try new things, but do take some time to plan a strategy and mark your time carefully. There is more than one reason why people fail to achieve their goals. A lack of discipline. According to self-development entrepreneur Brian Tracy, discipline is being able to do what you need to do, when you need to do it, whether you like it or not. Get into the headspace of working towards your goals even at difficult times. Such sacrifices mean not just achieving your resolution, but creating a successful habit. A lack of passion. On New Year's Day, depending on if you are nursing a hangover, anything seems possible. What is the week's role on other things happen and what motivation you had is compromised. Before embarking on a new project, create an image of your goal in your head. Write it down. Then hit it with all the feelings that achieving it will give you. If you want to learn a new language or skill, say, visualize how great it would be to speak that language. Write down all the feelings that it will give you and keep adding to it. How would you feel speaking the language when traveling? Or for work? The more emotion and feeling you have, the fiercer your pursuit of the goal will be. A lack of focus. Your goals end up being too hard. You've managed initial steps then realize that it's going to take much more energy and effort. At this point you start to feel overwhelmed and you give up. Instead, create a plan with all the steps necessary to complete your goal. Knowing what's needed makes the journey easier. A lack of accountability. Being accountable for your actions increases the chances of reaching your goals. It's easier, too, if there are other people, friends or family, who share the same goal. 
search around. If not, are there any clubs or societies you can join? You can let yourself down, but letting others down is much more disappointing. Too busy. People often tell me they don't have the time to do what they want to, and it's true we are busy possibly working several jobs, looking after children and maybe elderly parents. Plan each day from the night before and rid yourself of time wasting distractions. Practice the Pomodoro technique, breaking down tasks into 25 minute intervals with a couple of minutes break in between for better time management and you'll be surprised. Then work on your goals. Too forgetful. Learning memory techniques is not just about remembering, it's also about creating successful habits of the mind. Visualization is the key to memory. So try and use your imagination for everything. Caught up in negative thoughts. There may be people out there who do not want you to succeed, but if you start to worry about them then you will likely fail. Instead, focus on the passion you have for achieving this goal to sail through the negativity. It's not easy, but it is also rewarding once you get there. With coaching I get to provide people with knowledge and skills to make positive changes in their lives. Here's my coaching formula to help you succeed. How it works. 1. Identify problem areas. Make a list of the things that are stopping you from learning as you'd like to. You may find that the only barriers are ones you've created in your mind. Or they could be physical, financial, time-based, time-based, skills-based or geographical. Make the list as comprehensive as you can. 2. Program development. Now you've identified barriers and problem areas, list all the knowledge, skills and resources you may need to fix the problems. After listing your problem areas complete your resources column because you may not have the information for the knowledge and skills columns until you've done a little research. 3. Goal setting. In a similar table, list your goals, but this time instead of a, how does it feel? Column, have one titled, how will it feel? The feel column provides a strong emotional response to the brain that stimulates further action to help you reach your goals quicker. Have a vision using emotion. 4. Action plan. Start the work. Read those books, attend those seminars, perhaps get a coach. Whatever it takes to achieve your goal, write it down. This will become your roadmap to success. 5. Habit plan. You have a plan, but you need to create habits for your actions so that when working on your goals, the tasks come to you naturally. That's the point of creating a habit. You might have all the resources and plans at your fingertips, but unless you make it a habit you simply won't do the work. 6. Ongoing support and review. As you work towards your goals, make sure you have someone to check in with from time to time for encouragement and support. Don't try and go it alone. Achieving Goals How I memorized the Sydney Yellow Pages in 24-24 days. After 9 long years of training, competing and coaching through my business, I decided to quit memory training. It was one of the toughest decisions I had ever made because I just loved what I did, but study, health and family issues needed to take priority at that time. Two weeks after this I received a phone call from a PR company that wanted me, as the Australian memory champion, to memorize the Yellow Pages phone books as part of a marketing campaign for the brand. My initial reaction was one of disbelief, but after discussions we worked out what I needed to memorize over 2000 business names and their phone numbers. They gave me some time to think about it and days later I was sitting on the couch with my laptop about to write a thanks, but no thanks email, knowing that this task would further add to the chaos that was my life at the time. Then suddenly something clicked. I knew I could memorize a phone book. I knew this was something I could do and I had to prove it to myself. I knew this opportunity had come about because of my hard work in the memory business for so many years, and to say no would have been like turning my back on that work. So I redid the calculations in my head. If it took 30 seconds to memorize one advertisement, then I should be able to manage 2000 ads in around 20 days. If I went ahead with it, 
I would have to take time off work, miss some university classes and, hardest of all, go without seeing my then two-year-old son for most of the day. Still, by being super organized and making slight sacrifices, I would achieve something no one else had. I retyped my email, I'll do it, and pressed send. The smart, sensible, measurable, achievable, relevant, timely goals that I learned in management class went out the window. In order to achieve something that had never been done before, I had to create a new plan. To be honest, I didn't even think, what if I can't remember? Or, what if I get the numbers wrong? Somehow I just knew I could do it. I believed in myself, and belief is such a powerful thing. I had 24 days before I would be tested in public at a convention and also give several live TV and radio interviews. At last the AK and volumes of Sydney's yellow pages arrived, they were much thicker than Melbourne's. I flicked through the pages and wondered on the best strategy to memorize this beast. I needed to ensure I had enough time to test myself and revise, and to have confidently memorized 20,000 plus digits that made up the businesses. I used SMASHIN scope to picture the name of each business. This was critical. If I didn't have a strong image for each business, then it would be almost impossible to recall its numbers. Then I memorized the numbers using the major system, decoding phonetic sounds for numbers. So the process was to visualize the advertisement and then link the number of the business to my visualization. To remember the ad for Bob's Cleaning 9217 7747, for example, I first imagined a person bobbing down and scrubbing the floor as hard as he could. Then I linked it to the number by having cleaner Bob take out his pen, 92, write his invoice on his dog, 17, with the dog jumping into a cake, 77. As the dog jumped into the cake, Rocky Balboa, 47, jumped up yelling, Adrian. It took a good 30 seconds to do this for each ad. For all you memorizers out there, there were many reasons I did not use the method of loci. Firstly, it would have taken longer and I couldn't have memorized the ads in the time I had. Secondly, I didn't have enough locations. Thirdly, as I was going to be tested at random, there was no point trying to remember the order, which is the method of loci specialty. Instead, I chose the basic linking strategy and it worked exactly how I wanted it to. I had also learned from a rookie mistake I made some time earlier on 11.16 Sane Radio when interviewed by Billy Brownless, Tim Watson and Andy Maher. They got me on the show to talk about memory and gave me a short memory test of 10 words. I assumed it would be easy because we memorizers remember hundreds of words in single sittings. I had even picked my favorite location to use. The method of loci is popular with memorizers in competition and one of the most powerful memory techniques there is. I thought I had it covered. Boy, was I wrong. Of the 10 items they tested me on, I only remembered 3. Listeners called up the station saying I was a fake and that they had memorized more than me. I also copped it from the presenters who had a good laugh at my expense. From this I learned that you might know sensational memory techniques but if you don't use the right one for the right occasion you'll end up with egg on your face. That first night of memorization was very nearly the last. I had memorized for 70 minutes but only got through 50 ads. My wife tested me but the results were disappointing. I didn't know if I should continue and I had barely even started. I was in this now though. I had to continue. Fortunately, work gave me two weeks off so I could focus fully on the task at hand. And I was very conscious of how important it was to remain healthy, to drink lots of fluids and eat right, remain positive and pray like crazy. The next day I did slightly better. The day after that, much better. Consistency was what I was looking for. Once I had gotten into a groove it was almost robotic. I was memorizing 60 ads in 60 minutes. Although it doesn't seem like much of an improvement from the first night, my recall was far better. 
I was memorizing 60 ads and going back 3 more times to re-memorize them. I memorized 60 ads 4 times and then moved on to the next lot of 60. I averaged around 5 hours a day memorizing. Some days I did slack off, but the following day I would put in a solid 8 hours. The longest day was memorizing for 10 hours, memorizing in 5 blocks of 2 hours with a break in between. Earlier I wrote about the importance of accountability. What helped me get through this challenge was the fact that I tweeted my progress daily, which held me accountable to my followers and friends. My dedication surprised even me, because in memory competitions I rarely memorized for more than 10 minutes at a sitting. That final week my white office table had become yellow, stained from the phone books, and I had a yucky metallic taste in my mouth from turning thousands of pages. By day 18 I had memorized both books. So I went back to revise the ads all over again to firm up my recall. I had 6 days to do this. Beginning again, I almost doubled my initial speed, 120 ads per hour, with even better recall. On arriving in Sydney I found myself swamped with television, radio and media interviews. I was tested live on national television and radio, but this time the hard work, strategy, consistency and sacrifices all paid off. I did make a couple of mistakes, it's true, but the client and the PR company were thrilled and it was regarded as a great success. List your goals. We've heard it before, but listing your goals in life can be an eye-opening experience. Writing them down makes them fully conscious, and your brain will love you for it. Put the list on your fridge or desk where you'll regularly see it. The more your goals are in the front of your mind, the more progress you'll make. Remember to feel. Close your eyes and visualize how it would feel to achieve your goals. These feelings are the most important drivers you have. If you don't have an emotional connection to a goal then you are only looking at a set of tasks and to-do lists. Feelings put you in a mental state of accomplishment even before you've accomplished anything. Begin now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Now. It could be as simple as picking up the phone and calling someone. Start acting now and you are one step closer to success. Using these techniques. Time moves in one direction, memory in another. William Gibson. Did you know? In 2015, the fourth most powerful supercomputer in the world took 40 minutes to simulate just one second of human brain activity. Chapter 6. Everyday Memory. You never realize what a good memory you have until you try to forget something. Franklin P. Jones. According to a March 2015 Australian Bureau of Statistics media release, dementia, including Alzheimer's, is now the nation's second biggest cause of death after heart disease. It is predicted that by 2050 nearly 1 million Australians will suffer from some sort of dementia, an alarming statistic particularly as there is no known cure for the disease at this time. It's little wonder then that people are becoming more and more conscious of brain health and are increasingly keen to exercise it every day. We may not need to be memory champions, memorize books, learn languages in a month or perform amazing memory feats, yet there are so many everyday things we do that are made so much easier by having a better memory. Where did I leave my keys? A common problem around the world is remembering where we left our keys. It's astonishing that this is such a common thing to forget and we've all done it at least once, but if you keep doing it maybe it's time to fix the problem. Try the following steps to help you always remember where you put your keys. 1. Visualize. Create a vivid image of where you put the keys to help with recall. Since this happens in our heads, we can exaggerate to make that visualization really stand out. As you put your keys on the table imagine that the keys grow in size and get bigger and bigger. Picture your keys getting bigger and bigger. Listen to the sound they make as they grow. 2. Associate. Linking our item to be remembered with another item allows us to recall better. Once again, since it is happening in our minds, we can be creative and make that association stand out. 
As the keys grow to an extraordinary size the table breaks in half, unable to carry the weight of the keys. Picture the table breaking in half. Imagine the keys becoming heavy enough to break the table. Listen to the sound of the table breaking. 3. Recall. Recall can be either conscious or accidental. Conscious. You remember the association with keys breaking the table. Ah, table. Accidental. You walk around your house looking for the keys and pass the table. You stop and ask yourself, why did the table break? Oh, the keys broke it. Voila. You find the keys. How to remember you've got everything before leaving the house. As you're about to head out the front door, visualize and associate all that you need to take with you. If you need to take your keys, phone, phone charger, bag and important contract documents for signing, individually link each item to the door. You need to visualize each story as you are about to head out the door. 1. As you are about to exit the front door a huge metallic key wax you in the face. 2. Your phone is now the size of the door and as it rings it causes the front door to vibrate. 3. The phone charger is blocking your exit as you try to leave. 4. You trip backwards over your bag as you try and head out of the door. 5. The front door is made of very thin paper and it needs to be signed, reminding you of the contract. The front door is only a trigger point to help you remember before you leave the house. Other trigger points might include when you get into your car or as you put on your shoes. Remembering where you parked your car. We've all forgotten at least once where we've parked, but walking around and around busy multi-story car parks can be frustrating and embarrassing. If you know how to memorize numbers, you can memorize the level number if there is one. If there isn't, then find something in your surroundings as a visual connection. Perhaps you parked outside and there are trees about 100 meters away roughly at a 1 o'clock direction. You can make a story of how trees crashed onto your car at 1 p.m. The trick is to find something unique and associate it with your car, but do not involve any other car as it may not be there when you get back. Remembering shopping lists. The simplest way to remember shopping lists is to use the Memory techniques of linking and association. To remember the list below we need to create an imaginative story connecting one item to the other. 1. Soft drink. 2. Floor. 3. Beetroot. 4. Vegemite. 5. Toilet paper. 6. Pineapple. 7. Cat food. 8. Dishwashing liquid. 9. Fly spray. 10. Chocolate. You walk into the supermarket and you are sprayed with soft drink by the staff. Just as you wipe yourself off, someone from the checkout accidentally spills floor over you. Everyone is watching and you are embarrassed and turn red like a beetroot. Of course you know the best cure for embarrassment, a spoonful of Vegemite right down the hatch. But the Vegemite must have been way out of date. Your tummy starts grumbling and you run as fast as you can and dive into boxes of toilet paper. As you come up for air you feel a large pineapple ring around your neck. You take a bite and realize it's actually cat food you are eating. Now you feel sick again and need to wash your mouth out. You grab the dishwashing liquid and give your mouth a good clean. Your mouth is frothing and bubbles are going everywhere so you grab fly spray off the shelf to spray the bubbles away. It works and you celebrate by treating yourself to your favorite chocolate. If you need to memorize more than 20 items it's best to use the method of loci as your story will get very long and one weak link in the story chain means you could forget everything after the last item you remembered. If, however, you memorize a lot of items and prefer to use linking and association methods, make sure your story is highly visual, imaginative and links physically to the next item. Remembering names. A good way to remember names is to visualize the person first. What's memorable about their appearance? Do they have a big nose? Long hair? Piercings? Exaggerate some feature even if they look remarkably normal otherwise. 
By doing this we create a strong holding spot for our information to be memorized, in this case the person's name. This is Bruce. To make him memorable I picture him with a bald head, wearing colorful running shoes, pants and a footy t-shirt. Now that we have a memorable visual of the man, we need to create a separate visual for the name, Bruce. The first thing that comes to my mind is Bruce Lee, the martial arts movie star. I could also use another Bruce, I know, but Bruce Lee makes a more interesting story involving punches, spinning roundhouse kicks and cries of, hiya. Yeah. Now for the fun part creating this story. Visualize the person with colorful running shoes, footy t-shirt and bald head being attacked by Bruce Lee himself yelling, hiya. Yeah. All that is left to do is to recall the name. Go back to the person you initially created an image for and think about what happened to them. In this example it was being attacked by Bruce Lee. As soon as you recall Bruce Lee it will trigger the name Bruce. These techniques are also helpful in remembering appointments, your kids schedules and running errands such as picking up the dry cleaning or dropping off shoes to be repaired. Everyday Technology Technology is great when it helps us live more productive, better lives, but it can also cause headaches. What we presume is making us more advanced could in fact be dragging us behind. Here are some ways to help deal with unknowing everyday technology problems that help exercise our minds at the same time. Passwords We have so many logins these days it's difficult to remember them all, but we do know that using the same password repeatedly is neither secure nor smart. Even so, many websites demand a minimum of 8 alphanumeric characters, including capital letters, and some workplaces insist you change your login each month. Memory techniques take the guesswork out of remembering multiple passwords. What needs to be memorized? The password itself. Username. The website or service you are logging into. These three items need images that are interconnected. It's no use trying just to remember a password because you may not remember what to use the password for. Let's say I want to remember an email account login and have these details. Username. Damicraig at yahoo.com. Password. SMFXFGJQ. Website. Yahoo Mail. Demo and Craig are my cat's names so I visualize them and connect them both to Yahoo via association. I visualize my cats in the morning after they've been fed with their victory cry, Yahoo. We have eaten. Believe me, if they could speak that's exactly what they'd say. Next is the password, a jumble of letters in upper and lower case, currently abstract with no meaning to anyone. Using the yellow elephant memory model we can turn the abstract into images through storytelling. A small snail, S goes up a large mountain, M, and as he goes up here some very strange faint sound effects, FX coming from a huge fireplace, F, where someone has thrown tiny goji, GJ, berries. As soon as the snail picks up the berries, the queen, Q, who happens to be 3 meters tall, walks in. Notice how I visualized small and faint images for lowercase letters and large, bold things for uppercase. Remember this trick. Also, be sure you use SMASHIN scope to make your visualization stand out. All that is left to do is to connect Demo and Craig with the snail story and we have memorized our Yahoo email password. When recalling this information, the first thing we see is the site or service to enter our details so we begin our story from that point. Demo and Craig cry, Yahoo! After breakfast when suddenly they realize they have eaten snails. One of the smaller snails escapes the food bowl and climbs up a large mountain, M, and hears some very strange faint sound effects, FX coming from a huge fireplace, F, where someone has thrown tiny goji, GJ, berries. As soon as the snail picks up the berries, the queen, Q, who happens to be 3 meters tall, walks in. It may seem like a lot of mental work just to remember one password. But you should only need to do it once. Once you've reviewed your story a few times you should be set and locked in the password. Here are some passwords to memorize. K4NMQQ5Q WBSUTPSR J242PEPX QYBZJTNB
you see reason. Once you've got the hang of making up stories, converting from abstract to image, see if you can use something similar for your own passwords. You can generate random passwords by visiting http colon slash slash www.random.org slash passwords. You can create passwords this way, or you could play with a mixture of letters, words and numbers that make sense to you. You can even join two different passwords together in upper and lower case. Just make sure you don't use any of these, which are the 25 worst passwords. 123456 Password 12345 12345678 Quality 1234 12.34 Baseball Dragon Football 1234567 Monkey Let me in ABC 123 111111 Mustang Access Shadow Master Michael Superman 696969 123123 Batman Trust no one Beans since 2014 Australian credit cards no longer accept signatures for purchases and now require a PIN, which can be 4 or 6 digits long. The key elements to memorize here are The service you are using for your PIN The PIN itself Say, for example, I want to remember my PIN for general ATM use Bank card ANZ Bank PIN 677501 Create a visual for the ANZ bank and the number 677501 using the major system or Dominic system to encode the numbers into images. The Australian and New Zealand cricket teams both greet you as you walk towards the ANZ ATM. You are about to put your card into the machine and the Australian team gives you a piece of chocolate 67 while the New Zealand team takes your chocolate and glues 75 it to the ATM. As soon as it's viewed, both the teams tell you to sit O1. Credit card numbers. Credit cards require more than just memorizing numbers and the key elements to memorize are the type of card, the card number, expiry date, security code, PIN, the type of card, Visa, the card number. 7833269065631984423 Expiry date 03-2019 Security code 671 PIN 1134 Create a visual for Visa, the card number, expiry date, security code and PIN. You arrive in a foreign country and unfortunately you do not have a Visa. You start coughing 78 to the mummy 33 next to you and receive a nudge 26 from the boss 90. You turn around to find that they have packed your luggage into a large shell 65 but they forgot the jam 63. You get annoyed so you gently tap 19 the face 80 of the ramp 43 that was sitting quietly next to the garden room 23. The officer comes along and asks you when your card expires and you tell them your sumo 03 wrestler's nose 20 is dripping like a tap 19. The officer gets confused then asks for your code. You tell him it's in your jacket 671. He reaches into your jacket and finds a piece of paper with a pin and the following words written on it. Teddy 11 is being held hostage by Mary 34. Telephone numbers. Key elements to memorize. The person business place to remember. The phone number. Let's say you want to remember your friend Bob's number. Bob Norman. PH. 0491779841. Create a visual for Bob Norman and the number 0491779841 using the major system or Dominic system to encode the numbers into images. A person is constantly bobbing up and down, bob, in a Harvey Norman, Norman, shopping store among the electrical goods. 
Bob suddenly gets a baseball bat 91 and takes a swing at you, but he misses and whacks a cake 77 instead. You go to take a bite of it but it's made of beef 98 and there are rats 41 running out of it. You can, of course, use the method of loci for storing longer numbers if you like. It's up to you how you memorize them, but as long as you create the story by encoding it will work. Stress Management Stress can take away our ability to progress in life and keep us stuck in a hole that we feel we cannot escape from. Using visualization, and especially through using SMASHIN scope, we can create relaxing stories that make us breathe a whole lot. Better. Imagine yourself on a beautiful island, the sun is up and the temperature is perfect. You get up from lying down on the soft sandy beach and make your way into the crystal clear water. You deep your right foot into the water and it gives you a tiny chill sensation, which rushes from your feet all the way to your brain. You slowly walk through the water, feeling how soft the sand is on the soles of your feet as the water moves between your toes. You can either read the above paragraph, or feel it in your mind as an experience. Go back and reread it and this time visualize and feel what's happening. Hear the sounds around you, feel the warmth and the chill, let your mind wander. Was it different the second time? Did you feel you were there? Being in the moment is a powerful strategy when dealing with stress. Using visualization techniques like this help you take a break from the real world and go to a place that soothes the mind. Continue the story and make it longer, or think of another relaxing story. Will it involve nature, your family, success? Whatever it is use SMASHIN scope to bring your story to life. Close your eyes for even greater effect. The three-step process of remembering keys will also help you recall other daily things like taking the bins out, or whether you fed the animals. Use the number systems for all number-based items or dates including phone numbers, pins, credit cards, wedding wedding anniversaries work well here too. Use your SMASHIN scope skills to create amazing visual stories for stress relief. Chapter 7. Study Techniques the whole purpose of education is to turn mirrors into windows, Sydney Sydney J. Harris. Most of us have spent our entire educational life learning through repetition. Indeed, most of the world still works this way, and probably will for some time yet. Many learners and educators might acknowledge other learning methods, but the safety and ease of rote learning ultimately triumphs. It's a proven system, right? It's produced so many academic champions and shaped learning culture around the world. But there's still a problem. Repetition sucks. It takes a long time and we often forget and are forced to repeat things over and over again. Today's students are given so much information that they don't have time to review material so it's no surprise they end up forgetting it. Then when it's exam time they endure the ritual of overnight cramming, a bizarre practice that is also a widely accepted form of learning. Personally, I was never a master of cramming. I couldn't bear the long hours and I'd get super stressed. My eyes were truly opened for the first time when I learned about memory techniques when still a student. Before that I had always assumed I had a bad memory. Learning memory techniques engaged the creative side of my brain which I loved. I've always been imaginative but had never used my imagination for studying before because I learned by road. Whole brain learning, which incorporates memory techniques such as mind mapping, linking systems and speed reading, won me over in a big way. And I didn't stop there. I knew that if it could help me it would be fantastic for other students too. How to study faster and better. We often don't think about why we study, it's just something we do because we have to, usually as part of school or a university course. Becoming more conscious about how we learn, however, helps us understand ourselves better and makes us more self-aware. This self-awareness can spark a deeper interest around specific subjects, driving deeper engagement and bringing real meaning to our learning efforts. What do you want to get out of your learning? If you are at school, is your motivation to get top grades or is it to satisfy your parents? 
If you are already working, are you studying to get better at your job or to find a new one? This is all fine, but have you ever thought about what you really want to learn? You may be an accountant who wants to learn how to cook Asian food or to play a musical instrument. Wanting to learn something helps your mind become more receptive to new information because you're more engaged with the subject matter. How will you motivate yourself to study? It's difficult to study something that's boring and dry. The trick is to change boring to exciting by using the yellow elephant memory model. Just imagine that the topic is the abstract, then create an image. Here you can use your visual skills, mind mapping, drawing, singing, dancing, or whatever you feel connects with the content you're reading. Try transforming multiple pages from a boring old textbook into a graphic representation on one page. With practice, you can turn something dry into something memorable. Mathematics. I was never brilliant at maths. I just scraped through at secondary school, and at university I failed it three times, making my undergraduate degree take years longer than it should have. After getting into all things memory and brain related, brain related, though, I understood that my difficulties with maths came about because it really is another language, one that was not well communicated to me or well understood by me. What I have since found to be a real help with the building blocks of mathematics is to memorize formulas. Memorizing formulas. Shape areas. We need to substitute images for symbols in letters to make stories that connect the logical sequence of the formula. For the multiplication symbol times we can have the action. Jump. So now let's apply the stories. Triangle. Area equals 1 half times B times H. B equals base. H equals height. You walk halfway up the triangle then realize you need to get down. You jump on its base and then immediately jump as high as you can to get to the top. Rectangle. Area equals W times H. W equals width. H equals height. You roll across the width of the rectangle to find a huge spider millimeters away, which causes you to jump up to the height of the ceiling. Ellipse. Area equals pi times A times B. You are eating a pie, which looks like an ellipse. The sauce runs down your shirt and you jump up, yelling, I. Suddenly you jump up a second time after a bee lands on you. Trapezium. Area equals 1 half A plus B times H. H equals height. You walk halfway up the trapezium and realize that you have to jump on top of both of your friends, Amy plus Ben. Embarrassed and ashamed, you step back and jump extremely high. Parallelogram. Area equals B times H. B equals base. H equals height. You see something on the base of the parallelogram and move closer to investigate. It's a snake and you jump up as high as you can from fright. Circle. Area equals pi times R2. R equals radius. After eating your circular pi you jump on the roller coaster twice. Trigonometry. Theta equals theta, which can equal the action, dance dancing. Equals separating. Sin equals sine. Cos equals cos lettuce. Tan equals tansel. CSC equals casket. Sec equals secretary. Cot equals baby cot. Opposite equals opposite. Hypotenuse equals hippopotamus. Adjacent equals agent. Formula. Sin theta equals opposite hypotenuse. You are holding a sign while dancing. Opposite you is a barrier separating you from the hippopotamus. Formula. Cos theta equals adjacent hypotenuse. You are eating cos lettuce while dancing. An agent pops out of nowhere and tells you to separate yourself from the hippopotamus. Formula. Tan theta equals opposite adjacent. Tan sal is dancing. Directly opposite him is an agent who is disgusted. Luckily, there is a barrier separating them. Formula. CSC theta equals hypotenuse opposite. The casket is being danced on by rowdy hippopotamuses. They must be separated and report to the opposite end of the room to be disciplined. Naughty hippos. 
formula. Sec theta equals hypotenuse adjacent. The secretary is dancing on her desk. The rowdy hippopotamus is about to join in when suddenly he is separated by animal safety agents. Formula. Cot theta equals adjacent opposite. The baby cot has dance music blaring out of it from a speaker. The parents call in the agents to separate the speaker and put it at the opposite end of the room. Algebra. Quadratic formula. Equals equals extremely loud. X equals xylophone. B equals blown away. Plus or minus equals clown. Equals heart. B2 squared equals one of the bananas in pajamas. B2 equals takes away. 4ac equals 4 apples with multiple cinnamon donuts. Blank equals divided by. 2a equals 2 apples. The xylophone is being played extremely loudly and is eventually blown away by an angry clown. Your heart starts racing, then one of the bananas in pajamas, B2, comes to help. He takes away your fear by giving you four apples with multiple cinnamon donuts. You are very kind and divide two of the apples to share with friends. How to write a good essay? Studying is not just about gathering knowledge and making sense of it, though. It's also about showing that you understand that knowledge, and the most common way we do this is through written essays, reports and exams. The real stumbling block to success in writing comes from not carefully organizing our thoughts and approach, so planning is essential. Our sample essay comes from Monash University's Language and Learning Online site. 1. Look closely at the essay topic. In the last 20 years, rates of divorce have risen significantly in Western countries. Critically analyze some of the different explanations given for this phenomenon. In your discussion you should consider what implications these explanations might have for social policy. 2. Order the information. The first thing to do is identify the topic, which here is rates of divorce in Western countries. Now we need to establish a Structure for the essay. Most are pretty straightforward, requiring an introduction, three or four main points or paragraphs in the body of the essay using quotes or references to support your argument, then a conclusion with a final point or recapping on points already made. By analyzing the question we can create a mind map structure for our essay. 3. Write to fill in the structure. Once you've established the shape of the essay, it's much easier to write the content to follow the different points that need to be made. 4. Fill in the gaps. Once you create your branches, you can clearly see what you need to write about. If you get stuck, simply move on to another branch and continue. It's not necessary for you to write chronologically, and because you've created the structure, the pieces will all fit together. It's a little like having a skeleton, now you need to add flesh to it. 5. Essential supporting material. Use quotes. They can help effectively support your argument and do so succinctly, and are often from experts in their field. Use facts. Facts help bolster your argument, key discoveries and key dates are essential to give authority to an essay. Here is the finished sample essay. A major change that has occurred in the Western family is an increased incidence in divorce. Whereas in the past, divorce was a relatively rare occurrence, in recent times it has become quite commonplace. This change is borne out clearly in census figures. For example, 30 years ago in Australia, only one marriage in 10 ended in divorce. Nowadays the figure is more than 1 in 3, Australian Bureau of Statistics, 1996. 45. A consequence of this change has been a substantial increase in the number of single parent families and the attendant problems that this brings Kilmartin, 1997. An important issue for sociologists, and indeed for all of society, is why these changes in marital patterns have occurred. In this essay I will seek to critically examine a number of sociological explanations for the divorce phenomenon and also consider the social policy implications that each explanation carries with it. It will be argued that the best explanations are to be found within a broad socio-economic framework.
One type of explanation for rising divorce has focused on changes in laws relating to marriage. For example, Wilton, Bonnet and Jones 1987 argue that increased rates of divorce do not necessarily indicate that families are now more unstable. It is possible, they claim, that there has always been a degree of marital instability. They suggest that changes in the law have been significant, because they have provided unhappily married couples with access to a legal solution to pre-existent marital problems p. 301. Milton et al. Therefore believe that changes in divorce rates can be best explained in terms of changes in the legal system. The problem with this type of explanation, however, is that it does not consider why these laws have changed in the first place. It could be argued that reforms to family law, as well as the increased rate of divorce that has accompanied them, are the product of more fundamental changes in society. Another type of explanation is one that focuses precisely on these broad societal changes. For example, Nikki Hart cited in her Limbo's 1995 argues that increases in divorce and marital breakdown are the result of economic changes that have affected the family. One example of these changes is the raised material aspirations of families, which Hart suggests has put pressure on both spouses to become wage earners. Women as a result have been forced to become both homemakers and economic providers. According to Hart, the contradiction of these two roles has led to conflict and this is the main cause of marital breakdown. It would appear that Hart's explanation cannot account for all cases of divorce, for example, marital breakdown is liable to occur in families where only the husband is working. Nevertheless, her approach, which is to relate changes in family relations to broader social forces, would seem to be more probing than one that looks only at legislative change. The two explanations described above have very different implications for social policy, especially in relation to how the problem of increasing marital instability might be dealt with. Milton et al. 1995 offer a legal explanation and hence would see the solutions also being determined in this domain. If rises in divorce are thought to be the consequence of liberal divorce laws, the obvious way to stem this rise is to make them less obtainable. This approach, one imagines, would lead to a reduction in divorce statistics. However, it cannot really be held up as a genuine solution to the problems of marital stress and breakdown in society. Indeed it would seem to be a solution directed more at symptoms than addressing fundamental causes. Furthermore, the experience of social workers working in the area of family welfare suggests that restricting a couple's access to divorce would in some cases serve only to exacerbate existing marital problems Johnson, 1981. In those cases where violence is involved, the consequences could be tragic. Apart from all this, returning to more restrictive divorce law seems to be a solution little favoured by Australians Harrison, 1990. Hart cited in Haralimbo's, 1995 writing from a Marxist-feminist Marxist-feminist position, traces marital conflict to changes in the capitalist economic system and their resultant effect on the roles of men and women. It is difficult to know, however, how such an analysis might be translated into practical social policies. This is because the Hart program would appear to require in the first place a radical restructuring of the economic system. Whilst this may be desirable for some, it is not achievable in the present political climate. Hart is right, however, to suggest that much marital conflict can be linked in some way to the economic circumstances of families. This is borne out in many statistical surveys which show consistently that rates of divorce are higher among socially disadvantaged families MacDonald, 1993. This situation suggests then that social policies need to be geared to providing support and security for these types of families. It is little cause for optimism, however, that in recent years governments of all persuasions have shown an increasing reluctance to fund social welfare programs of this kind. It is difficult to offer a comprehensive explanation for the growing trend of marital breakdown. And it is even more difficult to find solutions that might ameliorate the problems created by it. Clearly though, as I have argued in this essay, the most useful 
Answers are to be found not within a narrow legal framework, but within a broader socio-economic one. Finally, it is worth pointing out that, whilst we may appear to be living in a time of increased family instability, research suggests that, historically, instability may have been the norm rather than the exception. As Bell and Zajdow 1997 point out, in the past, single parent and step families were more common than is assumed, although the disruptive influence then was not divorce, but the premature death of one or both parents. This situation suggests that in studying the modern family, one needs to employ a historical perspective, including the possibility of looking to the past and searching for ways of dealing with problems in the present. Preferences Australian Bureau of Statistics, 1996. Divorces, Australia. Canberra. Australian Government Printing Service. Bell, R. and G. Zajdao, 1997. Family and Household. In R. Judy Dini, S. Kenny and M. Poole, Eds. Sociology. Australian Connections. St. Leonard's. NSW. Allen and Unwin. Bilton, T. K. Bonnet and P. Jones, 1987. Introductory Sociology, 2nd Edition. London. Macmillan. Haralambos, M. 1995. Sociology. Themes and Perspectives, 3rd Edition. London. Bell and Hyman. Harrison, M. 1995. Grounds for Divorce. Family Matters. No. 42, pp. 34-35. Johnson, V. 1981. The Last Resort. A Women's Refuge. Ringwood. Penguin. Kilmartin, C. 1997. Children Divorce and One Parent Families. Family Matters. No. 48. Available online. McDonald, P. 1993. Family Trends and Structure in Australia. Australian Family Briefings No. 3. Melbourne. Australian Institute of Family Studies. Sometimes it is rocket science. It should be clear by now how mind maps can really help condense many points of information to keep you focused on the sum of its parts. Just for fun I thought of creating a mind map for a chapter on rocket science taken from the NASA website, which you can find here. www.grc.nasa.gov slash www slash k-12 slash k-12 slash rocket slash rukfa.html Make time to learn things you want to, not just need to, to free your mind from everyday routine. Keep at it and get others involved. Social learning makes you learn even faster. Use mind mapping to organize writing projects for articles, essays and reports. Don't ever stop learning. It provides fuel for the soul and change in the world. Chapter 8. Speaking to an audience. Of all of our inventions for mass communication, pictures still speak the most universally understood language. Walt Disney. Making information memorable for others is what communication is all about, and it's the fourth and final step of the yellow elephant memory model. What is memorable for ourselves, however, may not work for others. Everyone learns differently and information can be perceived in many ways so it's important to think not only about the information you are providing but also how you'll communicate that to an audience. Making speeches memorable. Many people in the world fear public speaking, and for many different reasons. Memory techniques allow you to be confident that your information is safely stored in your head and accessible, which helps you present with conviction and hopefully settles nerves. Here are some quick tips to help you present that material with confidence. Know your audience. This allows you to really tailor your message. Always ask ahead for as many details as you can such as the number of people expected, their age demographic, the types of jobs they have in, if possible, what they hope to get from the presentation. Know your key message. In one sentence determine what it is that you are trying to say to your audience. If you struggle to do this, then you need to simplify your message. Plan. 
Write down all the things you will talk about and create a mind map to quickly identify the main subject area so you can then develop your content. Time. Once you have mapped out your talk, work out how long the sections will take. With practice these estimates become fairly accurate. Prepare. If you have time, practice your presentation in front of a mirror, video recorder or family and friends. This will help you evaluate your vocal projection and diction, and show if your body language needs some work and if you're rushing things or are too slow. Deliver. If you've done all your preparation this should be easy. Of course nerves, technical problems, hecklers, roadworks outside and other disruptions could still occur so your best defense is to know your message really well. Memorize your keywords, themes and approach. This is better than memorizing your entire talk word for word because you can present it naturally in different ways. People don't want to see a robot talking, they want to see a human speaking. It is far more engaging and builds trust. Get feedback. Comments whether they are great, constructive or negative provide provide opportunities for you to improve in areas that you might not even have been aware of such as mumbling or needing to ask more questions from the audience. No feedback means you only take away what you have experienced. Reflect and improve. Not many presenters reflect on their speech once it's over. But taking the time to review your speech provides you with ways to improve it so next time it's even better. Death by PowerPoint. Think of presentations where the screen is filled with text and the presenter drones on, reading out every single word, neglecting to add any images to break up the words and create some variety. How dull. These types of talks are trapped in the first step of the yellow elephant memory model. Without images the presentation cannot move to the second step. The excerpt below is from the elements of style by Strunk and White. IV. A few matters of form. Headings. Leave a blank line or its equivalent in space after the title or heading of a manuscript. On succeeding pages, if using ruled paper, begin on the first line. Numerals. Do not spell out dates or other serial numbers. Write them in figures or in Roman notation, as may be appropriate. August 9, 1918, the 9th of August 1918. Rule 3. Chapter 12. 352nd Infantry. Parentheses. A sentence containing an expression in parenthesis is punctuated, outside of the marks of parenthesis, exactly as if the expression in parenthesis were absent. The expression within is punctuated as if it stood by itself, except that the final stop is omitted unless it is a question mark or an exclamation point. I went to his house yesterday, my third attempt to see him, but he had left town. He declares, and why should we doubt his good faith? that he is now certain of success. When a wholly detached expression or sentence is parathesized, the final stop comes before the last mark of parenthesis. Quotations Formal quotations, cited as documentary evidence, are introduced by a colon and enclosed in quotation marks. The provision of the constitution is No tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state. Quotations grammatically in apposition or the direct objects of verbs are preceded by a comma and enclosed in quotation marks. I recall the maxim of La Rochefoucauld, gratitude is a lively sense of benefits to come. Aristotle says, art is an imitation of nature. Quotations of an entire line, or more, of verse, are begun on a fresh line and scented, but need not be enclosed in quotation marks. Wordsworth's enthusiasm for the revolution was at first unbounded. Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive. But to be young was very heaven. Quotations introduced by that are regarded as an indirect discourse and not enclosed in quotation marks. Keats declares that beauty is truth, truth beauty. Proverbial expressions and familiar phrases of literary origin require no quotation marks. These are the times that try men's souls. He lives far from the madding crowd. The same is true of colloquialisms and slang. References In scholarly work requiring exact references, abbreviate titles that occur frequently, giving the full forms in an alphabetical list at the end.
As a general practice, give the references in parenthesis or in footnotes, not in the body of the sentence. Omit the words act, scene, line, book, volume, page, except when referring by only one of them. Punctuate as indicated below. In the second scene of the third act. In 3, E, still better, simply insert 3, E in parenthesis at the proper place in the sentence. After the killing of Polonius, Hamlet is placed under guard IV, E. 14. 2 Samuel I, 17-27. Othello 2.E 264 to 267 3.E 155-161 Syllabication If there is room at the end of a line for one or more syllables of a word, but not for the whole word, divide the word, unless this involves cutting off only a single letter, or cutting off only two letters of a long word. No hard and fast rule for all words can be laid down. The principles most frequently applicable are But divide the word according to its formation. No ledge, not no ledge. Shakespeare, not Shakespeare. The scribe, they scribe, not they cribe. Atmosphere, not atmosphere. Be divide, on the vowel. Edible, not edible. Proposition. Ordinary. Estial. Religious. Opponents. Regula. Classify C80 and three divisions allowable. Decorative. Precedent. C. Divide between double letters, unless they come at the end of the simple form of the word. Apen nines. Cincinnati. Referring. But telling. D. Do not divide before final ed if the A is silent. Treat ed but not romed or named. The treatment of consonants in combination is best shown from examples. For tune, picture, singly, presumptuous, illustration, substantial, either division, industry, instructian, chugastian, incendiary. The student will do well to examine the syllable division in a number of pages of any carefully printed book. Titles For the titles of literary works, scholarly usage prefers italics with capitalized initials. The usage of editors and publishers varies, some using italics with capitalized initials, others using Roman with capitalized initials in with or without quotation marks. Use italics indicated in manuscript by underscoring, except in writing for a periodical that follows a different practice. Omit initial A or the from titles when you place the possessive before them. The Iliad. The Odyssey. As you like it. To a Skylark. The Newcombs, A Tale of Two Cities, Dickens's Tale of Two Cities. Now compare the text against a mind map version of the same content. The Use of Narrative Illustration Just as mind maps can be used to summarize large volumes of information in an organized way, so too can illustrations. These techniques mirror the yellow elephant memory model because the abstract spoken word is transformed into images, which then tell a story. This is what you often find in comics and graphic novels but they're increasingly being used to help presentations. Check out a few of the sites listed in the sources page p. 184, at the back of this book. Know your key message when presenting. Rehearse your presentation. Use imagery, stories and keywords as triggers for your talk. Double check content before you speak or press send. Will the audience or reader easily understand it? Use mind maps or illustrations to help encode big. Blocks of data. Chapter 9. Learning languages. Learning never exhausts the mind. Leonardo da Vinci. Learning another language opens a door to a new culture and expands your assumptions of how other people, often very different from you, live their lives. It also demonstrates to everyone your dedication and discipline, which may result in other, extra benefits and opportunities. There are, however, a raft of reasons people use to explain why they've not managed to learn another language, many of them similar to those made in Chapter 5. It's too difficult. 
I used to believe Chinese was an extremely difficult language to learn because of its bewildering written text with its vast number of characters and the very different sounds it makes being spoken. But when I began studying it I found some principles were easier to understand than with English. You never know unless you give it a go. I don't have the time. People are busy and time is precious. Most people, though, don't know how to use their free time effectively. New technologies are also needlessly keeping us busier as well as wasting our time. And what if learning a language wasn't so difficult or time consuming? Time consuming. In 2013 I spent a year as a participant in the ASEA Link Leaders Program. This program allows leaders in a range of professional fields to initiate projects that engage and build stronger Asia-Australia relationships. As the memory expert, I wanted to apply memory techniques to learn Chinese Mandarin in the most effective and efficient way possible. I couldn't begin by opening any book on Mandarin and memorizing but instead had to develop a plan, similar to the one I used to memorize the yellow pages. I knew I had to develop a memory strategy, choose the most suitable memory techniques, develop a learning program incorporating the techniques, test it myself. This project helped me develop a template not just for learning Mandarin, but for any language. And the cool part is that if you spend 40 minutes a day on this you'll be speaking the language within a month. How it works? Many people believe we need to learn and memorize vocabulary to learn and speak a language. While this may be true in one sense, memorizing hundreds or even thousands of words doesn't mean that you'll learn the language. This is because words on their own have no context and meanings can differ enormously depending on the situation. When we were children our parents spoke to us with phrases like, Come here, hello, how are you? And, what on earth are you doing? Okay, the last one was inspired by my wife dealing with my four-year-old. We learned our mother tongue through repeated phrases, so it makes sense for us to memorize phrases instead of individual words. The difference between remembering through rote learning, the repetition of phrases, and memory techniques is time. You may repeat phrases hundreds of times, while memory techniques may only require three or four repetitions. Memory techniques enable you to learn much faster, with better long-term long-term recognition. Memorizing phrases helps us learn things in context and gets us speaking much faster than if learning individual words. The concept then is, the more phrases you memorize, the more language you will be able to speak. To begin you will need to do three things. 1. Learn and memorize the pronunciations. 2. Memorize the phrases. 3. Review phrases. If you don't learn the correct pronunciation then the memory connections you make will be incorrect. Yes, you'll likely remember them, but you'll end up saying the wrong thing. It is essential to spend time memorizing the pronunciations, and this is especially the case for languages that are tonal like Chinese. Tonal languages use different pitches to distinguish meaning. Memorize the wrong pitch, and you could be offending someone instead of asking for their name. Chinese Mandarin Pinyin System This system was designed to translate the pronunciation of Chinese characters phonetically. Pinyin is Chinese for, spelled out. Spelled out sounds. Pronunciations. B. Similar to, B, in, both soften to a, P, sound. P. Similar to, P, in, top, with more finality. M. Same as, M, in the English, M. F. Same as, F, in the English, fat. D. Similar to, D, in the English, down. Soften to approach a, T, sound. T. Similar to T in the English top. N. Similar to N in the English name. L. Similar to L in the English look. G. Similar to G in the English go. Soften to approach a K sound. K. Similar to K in the English kiss. H. Similar to H in the English hope. J. Similar to J in the English jeep. 
टंग इज पोजिशन बिलो लोअर टीथ क्यू सिमिलर टू सी हेच इन द इंग्लिश चीक टंग इज पोजिशन बिलो लोअर टीथ एक्स सिमिलर टू एस एच इन द इंग्लिश शीप टंग इज पोजिशन बिलो लोअर टीथ सेड एच सिमिलर टू जे इन द इंग्लिश जैम सी हेच सिमिलर टू सी हेच इन द इंग्लिश चीक एस एच सिमिलर टू एस एच इन द इंग्लिश शिप आर Similar to Z in the English Azur, Z. Same as D S in the English Woods, C. Similar to Az in the English Bits, S. Similar to S in the English C, Y I. Similar to E in the English V, W U. Similar to O in the English Room, U. Purse your lips and position the tongue high and forwards, A. Similar to A ah in the English A ah ha, W O. Similar to O in the English B O. A. Similar to O uh in the English Hers, Y A. Similar to the English Y, A I. Similar to the English I, E. Similar to E in the English W, P O. Similar to O in Sour Crowd, O U. Similar to O U in do, an. Similar to an in fan, n. Similar to an in under, ang. A Mandarin a followed by the ng sound like in the English sing, ang. A Mandarin e followed by the ng sound like in the English sing, a. A Mandarin e with the tongue curled back. Tonal system. There are five tones in Chinese Mandarin, which are critical to understand as you learn to speak the language. Warning: If the tone you use is incorrect, you'll be saying something completely different from what you meant to say. One, level monotone, ma, mother. The tone is consistent, just like opening your mouth at the dentist and saying a. Eh. Two, rising tone, ma, hem. The tone rises up as if asking a question. What? Three. Dips down then up. Ma. Horse. The tone dips down and then back up again, like stretching out the word do. Do or. Four. Fast fall down. Ma. Scold. The tone quickly dips down, similar to saying the quickly. Five. Neutral. No emphasis. Ma. Sounds as it is read like me, like you just don't care. How to memorize Chinese phrases? Use the yellow elephant association techniques to help you. Abstract. Ni hao ma. How are you? Image. Ni ni hao hao ma ma. As in mother. Association. You hit your knee on the table and started to scream in pain. You hear a voice behind you asking. How did you do that? You turn around and see that it was your ma who then says, "How are you?" French. Many of us likely began to study French at school but gave it away after a couple of years. This Romance language shares many similarities with English, and the same alphabet certainly helps. Pronunciation. Vowels. A A A. Similar to a in card. A. Similar to a in around, a. Similar to i in lay, a a. Similar to e in get, i i. Similar to e in deed, o o o o o. Similar to o or ao in saw, o u. Similar to u in food, u u. Similar to u in few, y. Similar to e in deed, consonants, b, same as b in bed, c, same as c in color, c, similar to s in sit, d, same as d in dog, f, same as f in fit, g, same as g in get, h. This is a silent letter, j. 
similar to G in orange. K. Same as K in kite. L. Same as L in luck. M. Same as M in mine. N. Same as N in nose. P. Same as P in peach. Q. U. Same as K in kite. R. Similar to first R in rare. S. Same as S in sat. T. Same as T in take. V. Same as V in viper. X. Same as X in exit. Z. Same as Z in zip. Gliding vowels diphthongs. A. Similar to I in light. S. Similar to E in head. O. O. Similar to O. And. Similar to arm without the G. E. U. Similar to U in poodle. O. A. Similar to E in me, but faster. A. Uh, sounds like A. Is. Similar to I in lay. N. M. Nasal sound. Same as an. In. Nasal sound. Like ang in gang without the g. Oi. Similar to va in wonder. Oin. Nasal sound. Like ang in gang without the g. O u. Similar to u in fool. On. Nasal sound. Like on in tom without the g. We. Similar to V in weep. Kui. Similar to V in weep but with the tongue forward. An. Nasal sound. Like an in lung without the L. CH. Similar to SH in push. GN. Similar to knee in canyon. E. Similar to Y in ears. Al. Similar to L. PH. Similar to F in fan. TCH. Similar to the CH in chess. TH. Similar to the T in tap. TR. The T followed by rolling of the tongue. How to memorize French phrases. Abstract. Comment a laze woo. How are you? Image. Comment comment a laze ali goose you. Association. A really funny comment was made to Ali. He turned around and asked, How are you? to the person making the remarks. It will take some time at first to come up with associations for the foreign words, but a minute or two is all that's needed to make up a story connecting the phrase similar to the example above. The more you practice, the better you will get. Try and visualize the story and the sounds around you and you won't need to repeat phrases a hundred times to learn them. A simple association with some emotion will make things so much faster and you'll be well on your way to learning any language in record time. Learning 1500 phrases will have you speaking the language at its very basic form. If you spend around 40 minutes a day memorizing 25 phrases then you pick up the spoken language in two months. That is less than 48 hours study. If you like, you can build on this with 17 phrases a day for 3 months. This system means that you can learn to speak any language within months not years. Try your memorization skills with the following Mandarin and French phrases. Pinyin. English. Jui dui bu shi. Absolutely not. NL gen wo yichi kuma. Are you coming with me? Ni nang kendeng ma. Are you sure? Kwai dol ma. Are we almost there? Jing kwai. As soon as possible. Zhang Xin Wo. Believe me. My cheer lie. Buy it. Mang Shin Da Dain Wa Ge Wo. Call me tomorrow. King An Yong Shuo The Man Xi Hao Ma. Can you speak slowly? Jen Wo Lai. Come with me. Gong Shi Gong Shi. Congratulations. Bata Zao Di. Do it right. Ni Dang Shin. Do you mean it? Ni Jing Chang Jian Dao Ta Ma. Do you see him often? Ni Mingbai Le Ma. Do you understand? Ni Yao Ma. Do you want it? Ni Xiang Yao Xi Shen. 
Do you want something? Bo Yao Zhao. Don't do it. Bo Yao Kwa Zhang. Don't exaggerate. Bo Yao Gao Su Bo. Don't tell me that. Bang Bo Yixia. Give me a hand. Ye Shi Wang Kian Zhou. Go right ahead. Shu Lu Tu Yu Kuai. Have a good trip. Shu Ni Yi Tian Bo Du Yu Kuai. Have a nice day. Zai Lai Yi Ge. Have another one. Ni Zhao Van Le Ma. Have you finished? Ta Me Kong. He doesn't have time. Ta Xian Zai Yang Zai Lu Shang Le. He is on his way. Ni Hao Ma. How are you doing? Ni Yao Dai Do Ju. How long are you staying? Do Shao Kian. How much? Wo Di Ta Zao Mi Le. I am crazy about her. Wo Zai Lang Fei Shi Jin. I am wasting my time. Wo Neng Zhao. I can do it. Wo Jian Shi Bu Neng Zhang Shin. I can't believe it. Wo Bu Neng Zai Deng Le. I can't wait. Wo Mei Shi Jin Le. I don't have time. Wo Yi Ge Ren Dao Bu Ren Shi. I don't know anybody. Wo Bu Zi Hu. I don't like it. Wo Ren Wei Bu Shi. I don't think so. French. English. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Wu Paris Francais. Do you speak French? Formal. Paris Wu Per Plus Lentement, si vous plaît. Could you speak more slowly, please? Paris Wu Miller Crier, si vous plaît. Could you write it down for me, please? Je ne comprends pas. I don't understand. Je ne sais pas. I don't know. A domain. See you tomorrow. Excuses moi, au sent les toilettes. Excuse me, where's the toilet? Bon journey. Have a nice day. Giant pettiness at unvisage round. I have a small nose and a round face. To is le visage tres rouge. Your face is very red. Jemine le chocolate maze je n'aime pas le lait. I like chocolate but I don't like milk. Quest se que vous voulez boy. What would you like to drink? Je cherche le centre commercial. I am looking for the shopping mall. Combien coûte le billet? How much is a ticket? Je peux essayer cette robe. May I try on this dress? Où vais vous m'aide? Can you help me? Très bien. Je vous souhaite une bonne journée, Madame Wazel. All right. Have a good day, Miss. De quoi souffrez vous? What's wrong with you? Vous prenez le carte de crédit. Do you take credit cards? Make sure you memorize the pronunciations before memorizing phrases. It will make learning much more effective. Take your time and don't rush making associations for phrases. Use the SMASHIN scope technique to help you. Visualize the end goal of speaking the language. How will it feel to communicate with someone in their language? Use this as motivation to keep you going. Have fun making silly stories for characters and phrases. Make sure you can practice with someone who speaks the language. You don't want to be memorizing for hours only to have done it incorrectly. Don't worry about getting the exact memory associations for words or phrases. Even making an association to the first letter can be enough to trigger the rest of the word. Chapter 7. Music One good thing about music, when it hits you, you feel no pain, Bob Bob Mali. Learning to play a musical instrument is often at the top of people's wish list of things to do, but most just don't get around to it. I taught myself how to play guitar, and back in the day played in a band in front of thousands as well as recorded in studios. And there are many famous self-taught guitarists such as Keith Richards, Jimi Hendrix Prince and Eddie Van Halen. I'm not saying ditch the lessons because learning the fundamentals and music theory will give you musical know-how and many more ideas on how to make your own music. But if you just want to play then it makes good sense to start with a simple approach. How to play guitar Most people will have some idea of how to hold a guitar. Usually it rests on your leg right, if you're right-handed, and is kept close to your body, upright and straight. 
It's important not to slouch as it's bad for posture and will make you tire more easily. You can play individual notes and chords on a guitar, though here we'll focus on individual notes so you become familiar with the instrument. An easy way to play notes, even if you don't know them, is to use guitar tablature. Tablature shows you where to place your fingers on the guitar to play. Here is part of the classical song for Elisa by Ludwig van Beethoven. The letters represent the notes and string types. The first string starts from the bottom A, then second string is A, then D, G, B, and the sixth string, E. You don't need to memorize these, you you just need to know that the first string is the thickest string, and the thinnest string is the sixth string. This means that for Elisa starts with placing your finger on and playing the 12th fret on the 6th string, then the 11th fret on the 6th string, and back to the 12th fret. A0 on a line means playing an open string. Have a go at playing the rest of for Elisa. Once you have mastered the guitar tablature, you can memorize the tablature by using the major or dominic systems. Let's look at ways to use the number systems to memorize guitar scales, chord progressions and aspects of music theory. The start of for Elisa can be memorized using the major system. 1 2 1 1 1 2 1 1 1 2 7 1 0 8 5 10 toe 10 toe 10 key toes will fly. 5 equals L, 7 equals K, 8 equals F, 10 equals R, 11 equals TD, 12 equals TN. Picture giving a tin can of food to a toad. He doesn't like it and throws the tin back. You walk up to the toad and ask why it didn't like the tin. He tells you that he needs a key to open it. You wiggle your toes and magically the tin opens. Much to both your surprise, there is a loud woof sound coming from inside. You both lie on the floor in shock. This memory technique also works very well to remember guitar scales as below. If we create words in groups of three digits using the major system we get the following. 357 milk 357 milk 457 relic 568 leech of 578 liquefy. 3 equals M, 4 equals R, 5 equals L, 6 equals CH, 7 equals K and Q, 8 equals F. Picture Dora the explorer drinking her milk. She loves it so much she is going for a second helping of milk. As she reaches for the fridge to grab one out, she takes out an old relic instead. From inside the relic out jumps a huge leech that latches onto Dora. She tells the leech off for scaring her and liquefies it with help from her trusty monkey boots. The Keyboard Piano lessons have been a part of many people's lives for generations. Today the piano is still one of the most popular instruments to play. According to a 2010 LA Times article, 6-year-olds 6 6-year-olds 6 who received keyboard instruction had more brain growth and finer motor skills than their peers. The piece also stated that, learning to make music changes the brain and boosts broad academic performance. So to sharpen the mind and improve memory, get in amongst music and play it rather than just listen to it. For those of you otherwise unfamiliar with the keyboard, let's play the song, You Are My Sunshine, by Charles Mitchell and Jimmy Davis Paul Rice. 1. First you need to memorize the notes for the song. The notes are C, this once middle C, F, G, A, B flat, C, high C, D. A simple way of remembering these notes is to group and make words from them from the song below. I've bunched the letters into groups of three notes, except when it made sense to use four letters to form, gaff, and complete the phrase for the song. Of course you can create your own grouping and ordering as long as you can make words out of the letters. 1. CFG. Cafe good. 2. AAA. AAA batteries. 3. Gaff. Making a gaff mistake. 4. FGA. Fog around. 5. BDD. Bad day. 6. CBA. Commonwealth Bank Australia. 7. FGA. Fog around. 8. BDD. Bad day.
9. CBA Commonwealth Bank Australia 10. FFG Fire and Fog 11. ABG Abigail 12. Guff Gave 1. To memorize we will need to make a story with the words above in a sequence. It's a beautiful day and the sun is shining. Your local cafe is good but you find AA batteries inside your cup. Oops, it looks like someone made a gaffe and you've already swallowed them. You try and find the waiter but there is too much fog around. Suddenly it's turning into a bad day and you race into the nearest Commonwealth Bank, but it turns out there's fog around inside there as well. This bad day looks to continue at the Commonwealth Bank because now there is fire and fog inside. You stagger outside coughing and a gorgeous lady named Abigail approaches. She also happens to be the waiter from the cafe and tells you whoever gave you the coffee will be sacked. 2. The next step is to play the notes memorized in step 1 on the piano below. The letters on the keys indicate the notes for the song. Having memorized the notes allows you to focus on building muscle memory for your fingers so that they start to learn where the notes on the piano are as you play the song. Work on memorizing notes for songs and then build your muscle memory by applying what you've remembered to play the song. Use your finger or, even better, a plectrum to play random notes on the guitar. It doesn't have to make beautiful music, it's just to get your fingers used to the fretboard. Websites such as YouTube, Virtual Piano and Guitar Masterclass offer some great videos on playing piano and guitar that are worth checking out. Get some guitar tablature. You can find plenty online as well as in guitar magazines. If you want to, try memorizing the tablature for a song to increase your memory power and exercise your mind. Chapter 11 Knowing more about everything Without knowledge action is useless, and knowledge without action is futile. Abu Bakr Siddiq Ra Today we are bombarded by information, meaning we have more to read more to analyze, more to think about and more to discuss. To stop us feeling overwhelmed by this aspect of modern living we need to organize our information better so we can access it faster and more precisely. With traditional methods of rote learning, acquiring knowledge takes time. In using a systemized approach we can reduce that time and increase our retention of facts and data. Questions to ask include What knowledge are we trying to acquire? How many pieces of information are we trying to remember? Which technique is the best for the job? How to memorize countries and their capital cities? The quickest and most effective way to do this is to use a straight linking and association method. Country Capital Association Morocco Rabat You eat a lovely rabbit stew in Morocco. Gabon Libreval there is a city that's a library where you are told to shut your gab and keep quiet. Comoros. Maroni. You comb a rose and it transforms into a maroon color. Latvia. Riga. You work out your lat muscles rigorously in Latvia. Ecuador. Quito. You will never quit until you reach the equator. Dominica. Rozo. Dominic O'Brien smells a rose in Australia. Oman. Muscat. Kevin Muscat says, oh man, after losing a game to Sydney. Switzerland. Burn. Roger Federer burns up the tennis court. Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur. Koalas come from Malaysia. Vietnam. Hanoi. You are annoyed when your bike gets stolen in Vietnam. Some countries are easy to remember while others are more difficult because of the abstract wording of country or city. Use SMASHIN scope to help make memorable stories. I may decide, for example, it's stronger for recall if I memorize Libreval, Gabon, by imagining my friend Gabriel standing on a library shelf. How to learn quiz questions and answers. To remember quiz questions and their answers. Break up keywords into images. Link each image. Review the associative story. Example. Q. What term describes an adult male swan? A. Cow. 
The words to associate and connect are Male swan and cob The male swan always eats corn on the cob. Let's try another. Q. What is the largest bone in the human body? A. Femur The words to associate and connect are Largest bone, human body, femur Picture holding a bone as large as a human. It's so large and heavy that you lose control and drop it on a female. Try memorizing the following quiz questions and answers. 1. In computing what is RAM short for? 2. Which organ secretes insulin? 3. Who was the first actor to refuse an Oscar? 4. What is the famous business list that Fortune produces each year called? 5. In which year did Adolf Hitler become Chancellor of Germany? 6. Who composed Pierre Gint? 7. Who was the youngest ever American president? 8. How many episodes of Faulty Towers were made? 9. What name is given to the hybrid fruit of tangerines and grapefruits? 10. What do the dots on a pair of dice total? 11. How high is a basketball hoop? 12. In photography what does SLR mean? 13. What is the motto of the shash? 14. Which two countries signed up to the common market in 1973 alongside the UK? 15. How many years did Nelson Mandela spend in prison? 16. Which star is the nearest to Earth? 17. What is the nearest galaxy to the solar system? 18. Which nerve forms the link between the eye and the brain? 19. How many species of reptiles live in Antarctica? 20. In which year was the first FA Cup final held at Wembley? 21. What is agoraphobia the fear of? 22. How many kilograms make up a metric ton? 23. On what date is American Independence Day? 24. Who said, I think, therefore I am? 25. In which country was cricketer Ted Dexter born? 26. What was the name of the policeman in Enid Blyton's Naughty Books? 27. The clavicle is more commonly known as which bone? 28. What is the collective noun for a group of rhinoceroses? 29. Facing the bow of a boat, which side is port? 30. Who painted the starry night? Answers. 1. Random access memory. 2. Pancreas. 3. George C. Scott. 4. Fortune 500. 5. 1933. 6. Edward Green. 7. Theodore Roosevelt, aged 42. 8. 12. 9. Tangalo. 10. 42. 11. 10 feet 3.048 meters. 12. Single lens reflex. 13. Who dares? Wins. 14. Island and Denmark. 15. 27. 16. The Sun. 17. Andromeda. 18. Optic nerve. 19. None. 20. 1923. 21. Open spaces. 22. 1000. 23. The 4th of July. 24. René Descartes. 25. Italy. 26. P. C. Claude. 27. Collarbone. 28. A crash. 29. Left. 30. Vincent Van Gogh. How to memorize quotes. Good quotes help us reflect on things and can pack a great deal of wisdom into a phrase or brief sentence. They are also one of the most popular forms of shared content on the internet. As with quiz questions, memorizing quotes uses association, but with the added difficulty of creating images for the person's name. The approach is to break up keywords into images, link each image, connect images to the person. Example, you have to dream before your dreams can come true. A. P. 
J. Abdul Kalam. Picture someone holding a gun next to your head telling you, you have to dream, or else. So you do that but before your dream can come true, you wake up. A man is standing next to you in a P. J. Singing Paula Abdul. You say, kill me now. Try memorizing these quotes. 1. Start by doing what's necessary. Then do what's possible. And suddenly you are doing the impossible. Saint Francis of Assisi. 2. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Helen Keller. 3. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Confucius. 4. Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection we can catch excellence. Vince Lombardi. 5. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. 6. I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. James Dean. 7. Quality is not an act, it is a habit. Aristotle. 8. To the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. Lao Tzu. 9. Give light, and the darkness will disappear of itself. Decidrius Erasmus. 10. If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. Milton Burl. Scores and statistics. Sports fans love a good stat. When considering statistics identify what you want to remember, there are many things and combinations of things such as score, goal scorers, teams, day, time and venue. Soccer Saturday the 14th of March 2015 Crystal Palace 3, 1 Queen's Park Rangers Wilfried Zaha, CP 21 feet James MacArthur, CP 40 feet Joel Ward, CP 42 feet. Matt Phillips QPR. 83 feet. From the above scores there are 11 different types of information to remember. Day, date, month, year, team 1, team 2, team 1 score, team 2 score, goal scorers, goal scorer team, and goal in minute of match. Images will need to be created for each. Saturday, Saturn. 14, door. 03, Tsumo. 2015 Nose, Doll. Crystal Palace, a large palace made of crystal. Queen's Park Rangers, the Queen deploying Park Rangers. 3. One Matt. Wilfried Zaha, Prince William Freed, a zebra. 21 Net. James MacArthur, Captain James Cook, having McDonald's with your friend Arthur. 40 Rose. Joel Ward, Hole in the Wall. 42 Arnie. Matt Phillips, welcome Matt with Bilton Phillips head screwdriver. 83, foam. Now for the fun in connecting the associative story. The planet Saturn crashes down at your door. It falls on top of a sumo wrestler who ends up breaking his nose. As he turns around he is greeted by a lovely doll inside a large palace made of crystal. The queen comes out of the palace with her park rangers on a long red mat. Leading the group is Prince William proudly riding his freed zebra. From his pocket he casts a net at Captain James Cook, who is eating macas with his mate Arthur. Both are trapped. A rose starts to appear from a hole in the wall, it's Arnie. He busts through the wall, jumps on the welcome mat, snatching up the Phillips head screwdriver, and rescues the two, landing safely on foam. It may seem like a lot of work. But it only takes one story to be developed and visualized for all the details to be remembered and stored in our long-term memory. To make it easier, perhaps focus on memorizing the teams, score and scorers. See how you go creating stories for these statistics. Sunday the 15th of March 2015. Everton. 3-0. Newcastle United. Manchester United. 3-0. Tottenham. Chelsea. 1, 1. Southampton. Saturday the 14th of March 2015. Burnley. 1, 0. Manchester City. Arsenal. 3, 0. West Ham. Leicester. 
zero zero Hull City Sunderland zero four Aston Villa West Brom one zero Stoke City Australian Rules Football To memorize AFL scores you can include Team one Team two Team one score Team two score round venue the associative story would go something like this. The Tigers Richmond were eating blue M&M's Carlton when they realized it was beef 98 so they spat it out and started eating fish 86 instead. They dropped the rest of the uneaten fish in a cup of tea round 1 and paraded it all around the MCG. If you were extra keen you can add further statistics such as attendance, date, goal scorers, best on ground and so on. Individual player statistics. Memorize the player's name. Kicks, handballs, marks and tackles can be linked together using any number technique such as the Dominic system or major system. Using the major system our story is. Greece conquer picture him conquering Greece. As he conquers Greece he kicks a donut 12, then handballs a hockey 7 puck, eventually marking a hair 4 that came off a Carlton supporter who had one tooth 1. Use your memory skills to create stories for the following individual player statistics. Identify what information you want to remember. Break down the information into bits to be memorized and create the images for them. Consider which technique works best for the task. Linking and association may work just as well as the method of loci. Practice with large sets of data so you create elaborate stories and connections, and remember more. Show off your skills to friends. This is a good way of testing your competence. Chapter 12. Become a memory athlete. The healthiest competition occurs when average people win by putting in above average effort, Colin Powell. Each year people of many nations come together for the World Memory Championships, where participants sit and memorize for an allotted time. Once memorization time finishes, a recall period is given allowing competitors to show what they remembered. The purpose of the competition is to see who has the best and most effective memory. It sounds extremely nerdy and only for really smart people. That's what I first thought, too, before entering it myself. When I did I was shocked to see every day, average people like you and me doing truly extraordinary things with their brain. This is what the World Memory Championships in this book are all about, the ordinary person doing extraordinary things. What's even more exciting is that the participants don't just remember hundreds of digits or randomly shuffled decks of playing cards, they take away skills to assist them in their everyday life, skills such as fast memorization, brain training for mental performance and improved concentration and focus. People ask me about entering the World Memory Championships because they understand that taking memory training to a competitive level enhances mental capabilities and massively improves everyday performance. Entering a memory championship will help you with greater memory and recall, improving focus and concentration, self-discipline, accountability, accomplishing goals, managing time better, completing tasks faster. The World Memory Championships comprise 10 distinct events held over 3 days. Entrants compete in all 10 events. For the chance to be crowned the World Memory Champion. Names and Faces 15 Minutes Memorization 30 Minutes Recall 12 Faces are shown on one a 3 sized sheet of paper with their first name and surname. You have to correctly memorize as many names as you can in 15 minutes. Spell a name incorrectly and you lose a point. Binary numbers. 30 minutes memorization. 60 minutes recall. Remember as many zeros and ones in rows of 30 as you can. A one digit mistake reduces your score to 15 out of 30. Two or more incorrect digits mean you score zero. One hour numbers. 60 minutes memorization. Two hours recall. Numbers are presented in rows of 40 digits. One digit wrong scores 20 out of 40. Two incorrect numbers mean you score zero. Abstract images. 15 minutes memorization. 30 minutes recall. 
Five abstract images are displayed per row for a total of 10 rows per page. For a correct row you get 5 points. A mistake means a deducted point. Speed numbers. 5 minutes memorization. 15 minutes recall. Digits are presented in rows of 40. A one digit mistake means you score 20. Two or more mistakes mean you score zero. Historic future dates. 5 minutes memorization. 15 minutes recall. Made up dates are presented on multiple pages to be memorized. Points are given for correct date recall in deductions for mistakes made. One hour cards. 60 minutes memorization. 2 hours recall. You can select as many decks of cards as you can memorize in one hour. Results can vary from no decks memorized up to a whopping 30 decks. Random words. 15 minutes memorization. 30 minutes recall. 400 words are presented in rows of 20. Get one word incorrect and you score 10 out of 20. Two or more incorrect words mean you score zero. Spoken numbers. 200, 300 and 400 seconds. Up to 20 minutes recall. Digits of numbers are spoken by an official at 1 second intervals for 200, 300 and 400 seconds. The person who has memorized the most consecutive numbers in a row from the very beginning wins the event. Speed cards. 5 minutes memorization. 5 minutes recall. This is the competition finale. The winner is whoever can memorize a deck of randomly shuffled cards within 5 minutes. Just keep in mind that the current record, at time of writing, stands at 20.44 seconds by Simon Reinhardt of Germany. So the memory competition is not just about who can memorize the most, but who can memorize the most, most effectively, and fastest. My experience as a mental athlete helps me enormously when teaching others how to memorize effectively, without the need to go back and repeat again and again. It's interesting, too, that the more I learned about memory, the more I got from speed reading, and vice versa. To help explain this let's turn to the speed numbers event of the memory championships. There are various ways of using the major system to memorize a row of 40 digits. One way is to memorize two digits per location, which gives you 20 stories to remember per line of 40 digits. The story for the above can be something like this. A dog 17 bites the front door lock. 1. A known 23 jumps up and down on the couch lock. 2. A bike 97 is ridden into the TV lock. 3. Chocolate 67 is smothered all over the window lock. 4. Now most people could remember these stories if they spent time imagining them. But with only a few seconds to memorize them. You may forget part of a story, which means forgetting the number. And as there are 20 short stories to remember in a row of 40 digits, there is a high possibility of making one mistake, or even two, out of that 20. To reduce this risk my approach was to memorize 4 digits at one location. This means 10 stories to remember for each 40 digits. The story for the above can now be something like this. A dog 17 bites a gnome's 23 bottom at the front door lock. 1. A bite 97 was painted with chocolate 67 on top of the couch lock. 2. A net 21 was wrapped around a seat 01 to smash through the TV lock. 3. A mop 39 was mopping away rice 40 surrounding the window lock. 4. It's a little longer but now there is more of a storyline instead of very short connections using two digits. A storyline is always more effective than a simple link because we can relate to it, because it has meaning. It is much more difficult to create meaning or a storyline for one particular image, and there is simply not enough time in the competition and not enough elements to drive the story further. While these techniques both accomplish the same task in remembering a row of 40 digits, the 4-digit memorization method is a far more effective strategy. In fact, it's possible to memorize even more digits in a location. What if you were to try 10?
This means making a story with five images linked to one another four times for each row. So if you only have four stories to remember per row of 40 digits, chances are you will remember them, especially if your story is imaginative. So what does this tell us about speed reading and memory? It tells us that they are essentially the same thing. The more stories we bunch together, the more effective the recall, which is proof of the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. The things you need to become memory champion are the same as those needed to excel in any other field whether it's competitive sports, business, education or entertainment. They include hard work, self-discipline, sound strategies, supportive, strong, positive people around you and a genuine passion and love for what you do. The World Memory Championships Training Program Here is a program of activities to help you train for the World Memory Championships. For those who don't wish to enter the competition, this is still a great brain training program. Names and Faces 1. Jump on a site such as Facebook or LinkedIn. 2. Find a page where it displays a list of people's names and their photograph. 3. Memorize their names using SMASHIN scope through linking and association. 4. Start timing yourself both with memorizing and recall. Try recalling the name by viewing their photograph only, ensuring you cover the name if it's directly under the photo. Binary Numbers 1. Download binary digits file from tansilali.com or use the 2. Pages of binary code here to make a start. 2. Memorize the following binary code using the major system or dominic system for the digits. 0, 0, 0 equals 0. 0, 0, 1 equals 1. 0, 1, 0 equals 2. 0, 1, 1 equals 3. 100 equals 4. 101 equals 5. 110 equals 6. 111 equals 7. 3. Memorize the binary code in pairs, as below, in rows of 30 for 5 minutes. 100 octillion 111 septillion 1 sextillion 10 quintillion 11 trillion 111 billion 1 million 101 10 thousand and ten. 100 111 rock 001 010 oh, ton 0 oh, 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 011 one, sumo 111,001 cat 010 oh, 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 none. As you get better, increase your memorization time from 5 to 10 minutes. Then from 10 to 20 minutes. 1 hour numbers 1. Download the random numbers file from tansilali.com 2. Memorize 6 decimal digits per location for 20 minutes, then go back and review for 10 minutes. Repeat this process for a total of 1 hour. There are various ways of doing this. You may prefer to memorize for 10 minutes, then go back and review, just don't memorize for 1 hour straight, you'll become tired and may end up forgetting everything. 3. Memorize numbers in groups of 3 pairs, and in rows of 40. For the last 4 digits of each row you can use the Dominic system. 4 duodecillion 712 and decillion 37 decillion 122 nonillion 946 octillion 340 septillion 315 sextillion 909 quintillion 488 quadrillion 277 trillion 103 billion 566 million 271 thousand 978. 471,203, 712,294, 634,031, 590,948, 827,710, 356,627, 1978. It makes sense to use more digits in a location for one hour numbers so you have fewer stories and locations to remember. Abstract Images 1. Download samples from tansilali.com. 2. Memorize by linking each abstract image together in a row of 5. 3. Memorize for 15 minutes straight. 4. Test your recall. Speed numbers. 1. Download the random numbers file from tansilali.com. 2. Memorize for 5 minutes straight using any method you prefer. 
5 minutes of memorization with no review helps. Strengthen your longer term memory and allows you to memorize more. At first you'll make a lot more mistakes but with practice you'll get a whole lot better. Historic future dates. 1. Download the random dates file from tansilali.com. 2. Memorize as many dates as you can in 5 minutes using any number system. 3. Here are the sorts of things you're likely to find. 1971. A cat jumped over the fence. 2012. A mobile phone floats on water. 1766. Peter Pan flies over Antarctica. 1335. The first painting of a chimpanzee is sold to a merchant in France. 1818. Wife divorces husband for forgetting wedding anniversary. 1 hour cards. 1. Have shuffle decks of cards ready. The number depends on how many you would like to memorize in an hour. 2. Download recall sheets from tansilali.com and print them out. 3. Memorize 3 cards per location for 20 minutes, then go back and review for 10 minutes. Repeat this process for a total of 1 hour. There are various ways of doing this and you may even choose to memorize 4 decks, then review and repeat the process. Random words. 1. Download random words list from tansilali.com. 2. Practice by memorizing 2 words per location for 15 minutes. 3. Spend 30 minutes to recall the memorized words in order. 4. Go back and review your mistakes. Visualize them. 5. Memorize again for another 15 minutes. 6. Repeat step 4 to remove any mistakes. Spoken Numbers 1. Go to tansilali.com and download the Spoken Numbers file. 2. Press Start and, using your number and location systems, memorize as many numbers spoken at 1 second intervals as you can. 3. When the numbers have all been spoken, write down as many as you can recall. Recall from the first number. Onwards, because any number not memorized after that is where you stop scoring. Speed cards. 1. Have two decks of playing cards ready, one deck shuffled and the other deck in suit order. 2. Have a stopwatch ready to time yourself. 3. Start your stopwatch upon memorization of the deck of shuffled cards. 4. Stop the clock once you've finished the memorization. 5. Pick up the ordered deck of playing cards. 6. Start your 5 minute timer and rearrange the ordered cards to match the memorized first deck. 7. When 5 minutes is up, or as soon as you've completed rearranging your ordered deck, put both decks side by side and flip them over, card by card, at the same time. If you have memorized and ordered the deck correctly, the cards should be identical as you flip. If they are not, then you have either made a memorization mistake or memorized from the bottom up, in which case turn the reordered deck upside down and flip both decks over that way. Memory championships training can fast track effective memorization. Adding more information to be remembered into one location makes it more memorable. Speed reading and memory engage in the same brain function, converting abstract to image. Self-discipline, hard work, and practice, practice, and more practice will make you a memory champion. Put your memory to work. Everything is practice, Pele. Did you know? When awake, the human brain produces enough electricity to power a small light bulb. Now that you have learned the principles, the techniques and their many applications, it's time to practice these new skills. This section will provide hours of fun and ensure that you make the most of your amazing mind. Just remember to build the memory foundation first by using SMASHIN scope before applying memory techniques. SMASHIN scope Create stories using the following Pencil plus door plus lemons Excited plus television plus leaves. Exasperated plus conundrum plus toys. Fork plus windows plus shower plus web. Cabinet plus excellent plus noodles plus delix. Disturbance plus sensitivity plus immaculate plus technique. 
forest plus computer plus brochure plus painting plus kite diligence plus football plus absence plus playground plus cloth fascination plus golf plus humorous plus exhibition plus free intelligence plus strictness plus beauty plus adoration plus idiosyncrasy